after the flood, the beyond the time of Abraham, there was another story that was extremely important to the legacy of Babylon, and that's the story of Esau. So if we go back to the time right after the flood and see what unfolded, we know from other flood survivors, quote unquote, there probably were other groups of people and maybe even offspring with angelic blood who survived Noah's flood. One of Noah's sons, Shem, was appointed by God to carry on the holy seed of Adam, eventually to Jesus Christ. One of Shem's descendants, Abraham, would become a very famous person in the Bible. He'd be the father of many nations. And Abraham had a son, his name was Isaac, and Isaac had two twin sons, Jacob and Esau. And Jacob would go on to have a very special position in regards to this holy bloodline. He would be the one that God would rename Israel, the father of the Israeli people. So, as we've assumed, Jacob and Esau didn't really get along. Uh, the two never really saw anything eye to eye. The interesting thing about this whole story is that not only would Jacob's descendants go on to form a very important nation, Esau's descendants would also go on to form a very powerful empire, and their battle, that seemed, would never end. At the time of their birth, Esau supposedly came out of his mother's womb first. According to the ancients, the firstborn son was of a special family significance. He retained a number of privileges within the family. As Esau was coming out of his mother, Jacob was said to have reached his arm out of the womb and grabbed Esau's leg, possibly signifying that Jacob wanted this birthright as well, and that they were going to fight for it in the years to come and possibly for their whole lives. But we're talking about Mystery Babylon here. So in order to, to discover an important piece of Mystery Babylon, we may need to go further back in time, a couple hundred years even, to revisit the times of Nimrod himself. Nimrod, to me, has always been one of the most fascinating characters in the Bible. There's a variety of extra-biblical accounts which say that Nimrod once confronted Abraham, Jacob's grandfather. He was even said to have thrown Abraham into a fiery furnace because he would not worship his idols. But an angel interceded and saved Abraham from burning in the flames. Nimrod was so amazed that he reportedly sent Abraham on his way and gave him great riches, as well as his own freedom. But the confrontations between the family of Nimrod and the family of Abraham was far from over. This clashing of virtual Babylon and people of Adam's seed would continue on beyond Nimrod, beyond Abraham, even to this very day. According to a number of ancient sources, Nimrod wore clothes which seemed to have magical properties. These clothes were said to have been the clothes of Adam himself, clothes of which God made for him as soon as he realized he was naked in the garden. Adam later on reportedly gave them to his son Seth, who passed them down through future generations. They eventually landed with Noah, and through Noah they eventually found their way into Nimrod's hands. So when Adam wore these clothes, all of the animals around him reportedly prostrated themselves in front of him in obedience. Nimrod understood that he could wear the same clothes, animals would do the same thing around him. So this probably could be one of the reasons he was said to be a, quote, mighty hunter of old. Even in Genesis, it says, and Cush begat Nimrod, he began to be a, quote, mighty one in the earth. So apparently Nimrod discovered the clothes would have the same effect on human beings, which allowed him easy rule over anyone he came up against. But we already know, well, some of us know, <laughs> that Nimrod's rule would not last for long. After his uncle Shem killed him, Semiramis took over the reins of Babylon. So we also know that Semiramis had a child, a child she called Nimrod, quote, reborn. So this Nimrod name, position, and title could have been taken from then on by subsequent rulers of all these areas to equate themselves with this first Nimrod and his godlike status. One day, one of these subsequent Nimrods went hunting, and he had acquired these same clothes of Adam naturally because he was now in power and used them in his hunts. Jacob's brother Esau also was a hunter and knew about the clothes. 
So Esau had a plot against this reborn Nimrod, waiting for the time that this Nimrod would be walking near him. He waited in ambush. And after a long fight, Esau eventually killed this reborn Nimrod and took his clothes. So they were now in Esau's possessions. It was a rough ambush. Esau had to not only kill this Nimrod, but fight off a couple of Nimrod's bodyguards. Esau was absolutely exhausted from this struggle. He ran all the way home to the place where Jacob was staying. And once he got to Jacob, he begged him for something to eat. So that led us to a very famous story in the Bible. And this is from Genesis. And Esau came from the field and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom, red. And Jacob said, sell me this day thy birthright. And Esau said, behold, I am at the point to die. And what profit this day? And he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. This Esau despised his birthright. So moving on, he sold Jacob his birthright for a pot of beans, almost unheard of in those days. Although Esau was out of the birthright of this holy bloodline, he did gain another through his actions. This helped to establish quite a sibling rivalry that unlike the world had ever seen, Esau's descendants would go on to form the Edomites, a people of whom were said to have eventually helped form a major empire in the future, and that would be ultimately the empire of Rome. So God hated Esau for his opposition to Jacob and his carrying on of this birthright of Babylon in the future to Rome. So you have Israel and Rome, two close but entirely different groups of people, at least as far as their moral codes and their culture at the time were. And now they were to be at odds with one another from then on. Yes, so the story of Esau did allow for a royal changing of the guard in regards to the spiritual authority and dominance of ancient Babylon. Babylon, the city, would eventually fall to dust, but the spirit of Babylon lives on. At one point, it was Cush and Nimrod, then Semiramis, Sh then subsequent reborn Nimrods as well. So now it was Esau's turn. He had stripped the royal clothes off of one of these Nimrods and kept the symbol of Babylonian majesty for himself. So tradition says that he buried the clothes somewhere. Who knows where? Be interesting to have those. <laughs> but eventually, maybe members of his own family could have dug them up and passed them on in secret to up and coming rulers of authority. Interestingly enough, the Roman Empire would have its place as a majestic, world-dominating system of authority. All roads lead to Rome, they say, right? So although the influences of ancient Babylon, political and religious, had begun to spread throughout many facets of the old world, its, its majesty was once held by the rulers in charge. And now, at least in some respects, the dominating influence and power uh, could have been transferred via Esau to another more powerful city and empire, which is Rome. So that's just a little little story there about Nimrod. Very interesting character in the Bible. And uh, no, this is, uh, this is not your weekly Bible study. If you're new to this, you may not know what this is. Um, sometimes even I'm not sure how to define it. <laughs> but my name is KJ, KJ Osborne with a Z, and this is Catching Up with KJ. And uh, if I'm correct, this is episode number 62. Let's see here. Yeah, I was I was correct. Now I'm going to jump over to the chat and say hi and see what's going on. How are we doing, guys? How is everybody? We got a great chat already. A lot of people here. Thanks for showing up. Hope you're all doing well. Thanks for listening. I uh, wasn't able to do a show last night, so I wanted to get one in on this weekend and uh, you know catch up with you guys. See how things are going. See what's on your mind. See if you guys have any. And thank you. Some people are saying, I hope you're doing better. I am. I've had a lot of people asking. I'm definitely doing a lot better. Uh, it's, uh, the last few weeks have been great. I got the sling off, and uh, that's good. That's good news. So it's coming around. You know, I can't lift weights for three months, they say. So, you know, I always like to try to do that. And, you know, that's about it. But thanks. And here we go. Looks like. Um, 
what I'm going to do here in a second, sorry, I've got a, uh, my Skype open and it keeps kind of uh, beeping over here. So let me take a look at what's going on while we're, while we're chatting. Because uh, I've got a few people coming on. i got a couple folks are going to join us tonight at different times. And, um, or maybe I'll pull them in together. I'm not sure, you know. We like to fly by the seat of our pants here and <laughs> not have anything uh, as far as... Uh, set up usually I kind of like to do it this way it keeps it interesting and give me one second guys hey can you hear me okay great um, let me see I don't think you're showing up on the show no you're not you're on my Skype so I'm on the show live right now and I'm talking to them no you're cool um, I will send you a link here in just a little while like within half an hour is that okay and it'll be on the Skype you and you jump in. Okay, thanks. See you in a bit. As I was saying how unprofessional I am, uh, a Skype call came in live on the show. So, <laughs> so there you go. But that's going to be one of our guests here in just a little while. And uh, I'm going to get uh, somebody else in here first. So we'll probably jump into that in just a few minutes. Let me jump over here to the chat, though, for a second once again. There, Angela, cool, you're here. So Angela is going to be joining me here shortly. And then we'll have our second guest on after that. So let's see what's up, though, with chat. See if I see any questions. How are you guys doing? Somebody says, thoughts on cigars. Uh, never given it much thought. Don't know much about cigars. Not a big fan. Uh, I'm actually more interested in the cigar-shaped UFOs. Uh, you should look those up. Uh, in fact, look up for fun. Uh, look up UFOs going into volcanoes and you'll see that a lot of these UFOs are enormous cigar shaped UFOs and I think the name for that some people believe is a Velixi and they call it an Illuminati uh, like an Illuminati ship basically for the shadow government for the controllers uh, that's a fun subject to get into I've covered that I think in some videos on some levels but but check out the cigar shaped UFOs that go into volcanoes and there's some amazing footage out there that, that went all over the place it's uh, not doctored something is going into these volcanoes shaped like a huge cigar other than that man I can't help you on the cigars but thanks for your question all the same and thanks again, everyone, for being here, man. We've got a great crowd. Uh, always do, and I appreciate you guys. I usually try to shout everybody out. Sometimes when I get started on that, it's like 20 minutes later, and I'm still trying to shout everybody out. So just thanks, everybody. Uh, Iceman, what's up? He says, KG, what do you think about the Sasquatch people? I was watching a show, actually, uh, not long ago with my dad called... Killing Bigfoot, I think that's the name of the show. It's uh, and it was goofy, you know. I mean, I, they're just exploiting all this stuff, uh, but you know, they're really there have been sightings. You know, the uh, what do they call them? The Yeti. They've got the Yeti, the abominable, abominable snowman. Um, there's things called skunk apes. Some people see in the Midwest that is just another kind of version of a Bigfoot, and then you got the Sasquatches, and and these stories have been with us forever, you know. So I I really do think there's truth there. You know, I do. I think there's something out there. Uh, I feel like it's related to the Indians because there's a lot of folklore with the Indians and these things. You know, there's something connected there. It's something spiritual, I believe. Um, that's me. I don't think it's so much of a cryptozoological thing. You know, I'm not sure. You know, I could be wrong, but, you know, those are kind of my thoughts. But, yeah, because all the footage they put out is always so goofy. Um, I was watching something at my parents' house a while back, and the commercial came on. It was the news. It was the news. And, they said coming up next, you know, some truly amazing new footage of a Sasquatch. And I was excited, you know, it's like a really long two minute break. But by the time it was over, <laughs> I'm on the edge of my seat because I want to see one of these things just like you guys. But, and of course, it was just another goofy hoax. You know, it's a lady talking, uh, there's snowing outside. You may have seen it. Then somebody runs by in the background with a big goofy suit on. I think it's made out of pot leaves too, to boot. You know, so, so yeah, just another goofy thing. But yeah, I'd like to, I'd like to see them. But I know, I know there's a lot of interesting folklore with the uh, American Indians and the Sasquatches. And if you haven't read about any of that, check it out. That'd be a fun one. I can uh, research and and read here on the show sometime too. That'd be cool. But anyway, let's see. Moving along. Thanks for your question too. Let's see. Hi Max. Thanks, man. Tadej, how are you? Thank you. What's up, Anonymous? 80s babies here. Old old school friend there. Good to see you. Precise, how are you? Nice to see you. Hi, Mandy. 
Lucas. Uh, give me a second, guys. It's uh, hey, guys. Sorry. Hold on. All right, guys, can you hear me now? Let's see. Can you guys hear me? We're having some technical things over here again. It totally kind of blanked out on me there for a second. So let me see if uh, chat's up to boot. And uh, hi, Amanda. Thanks. Can you guys hear me now? I just want to make sure. Anybody? Just checking to see if you guys can hear me now. Sorry, we had a, it all kind of froze up there for a second. So just give me a sec, okay? But I think you guys can hear me. Anybody? Guys? Sorry, it's, it's uh, freezing up over here. So just give me a second. Philip Pringle, how you doing? All right, let's see. Go all the way back down here. Let's see if you guys can hear me. Sorry, guys, it's acting really goofy over here. All right, guys, that should be good. Sorry, man, it keeps kind of bouncing out there, okay? I don't know what the deal is, but, and this has happened before, but yeah, it keeps kind of freezing up every now and then, so cool. It looks like you can hear me again. All right, so uh, I want to keep going through the chat. What they did is, man, they changed the chat. There's something different here. I don't feel like I was having as many problems last week with it, but it just seems to be running real clunky. I'm not sure. So anyway, I'm going to try to go back a little bit and see if I can't answer maybe a few more questions, and I'll bring Angelo on, and then I'll bring our, our uh, second guest on after that, okay? So I'm messing with the chat again, so it may go blank again for a second. I'm not sure. That's when it starts doing it. It just seems to – I get a message on my screen that says no response, and it just freezes up. But dang. That's what happens sometimes with this going live and everything. Joseph Smith, hi, he says, do you believe Satan influences le electronics a lot? Hold on. As I said that. So sorry, man, I still, I'm still getting that message. My screen looks like it's freezing up. Ugh. Okay, I'm back, sorry. It keeps, the screen just freezes up, and I get this uh, no response message from Mozilla or whatever, so that's what that is. Um, Xavier Seto asks, are you gay? Uh, no, no, I'm not gay. Um, good question, I guess. If that was for me, I'm not sure. Again, I'm kind of just jumping into the chat here as I go. And what's up, Unbent Reed? How are you? Iron Man? Somebody asked if I think Satan messes with, with electronics and, and, you know, the Prince of the Air, of course. And, uh, just as I read that, it, the whole thing locked up again for a few seconds. So, yeah, sure. I think so. I think so. Okay, I'm going to try to scroll down a little bit. Hi, Relevant Truth. No, I'm not using Chrome. No, Relevant Truth, I'm not using Chrome, but that's actually a good idea. I'm sure that's probably what the problem is, the fact I'm on Mozilla. So I'll have to correct that next time. You know what I mean? But that's good. Good looking out. What's up, Robot Mafia? How you doing? Uh, Peregrino, hi, says, hey, do you miss South America? You know, honestly, at this point, I don't. I mean, I was seriously convinced that I was, you know, that was it, man. I was going to stay down in South and Central America, and I would eventually perfect my Espanol, and uh, that would just be my life, you know. But, but then the accident and everything happened so fast and got me back here so quick that I just felt that, you know, you go with the flow with this stuff, and I was being sent a message, I guess, you know, as far as, uh, you know, spiritually, you know, I trust God and I trust these things that happen and, 
And I even think I took it well, you know, the whole accident and the change of pace. I just really went, you know, went with it, just rolled with it because I know that ultimately it's going to work out for, for good, right, or for better. And I had a few friends asking that, you know, some friends down there before I left asking, uh, you know, talking about how much of a bummer it was and asking if I was going to miss it and all this. And, and I'll tell you the same thing I told them. I, I said, no, I've had two years of like a five star experience out here, you know, and that's out of one out of five stars, five star experience out here. You know, it's been incredible an amazing two years and, uh, did a lot, saw a lot, experienced a lot, met a lot of great people. And it was great, man. You know, I'm, I'm blessed that I had, I had a chance to do it because while I was down there every, th every three months, I had to leave the country for immigration for three days. So I was also traveling down there. You know, I got to see a lot of places and see a lot of cool things. You know, it's still down there. It's not like it's going away. So, uh, it's not looking like I'll ever be able to go back to Costa Rica unless I've come up with $30,000. <laughs> All right. But there's a lot of other really cool places down there, you know, so eventually I'd like to just travel back, maybe take some vacations or whatever. I'd like to see Peru. I'd like to, well, I would say Brazil, but probably not right now, but you know, I'd like to head out there sometime if uh, things don't clear up. If you haven't seen footage of what's going on in Brazil, if you want to see, if you want to see just how bad it can get. And Venezuela is another example. You know, these are, some people see these as, as uh, mirrors to what could possibly happen here in America. You know, if, if, uh, if it all goes down, power goes down or uh, banks, you know, go down or whatever. And, and it really is showing the worst of the worst of humanity. Uh, so not sure if you want to see this. Some of it's pretty hardcore and graphic, but it's uh, an, an interesting study of what happens to a society uh, when it's collapsing. And uh, I think it's something we could all learn from. So Venezuela, you know, wheelbarrows full of money for like a you know, carton of milk. It's stuff you'd seen in cartoons, right? But that's real. And then Brazil, uh, they're just butchering each other in the streets and there's also cannibalism. So, so yeah, not a fun subject, you know, <laughs> but, but it's, it's interesting and it's stuff that uh, we should be aware of, I think. So let's see, jumping over here. Now I can't remember how we got from cigars to that subject, but let's just keep going with it. A couple people have written Pizzagate in here. I did a few of those videos and we had a really good, I thought a really good catching up show with a, a panel about Pizzagate. I was just telling someone the other day that one of my next video, videos is gonna be about all this stuff. Uh, again, not just Pizzagate, but all the uh, pedo rings that are being busted lately and all the new revelations around the Podesta brothers and all this other stuff. So it just seems like every other day there's a new story about some pedos being exposed. I think that's great. I mean, remember there was there were people out there telling us, you know, don't cover Pizzagate. You know, it's a psyop. Uh, it means nothing. You know, why am I talking like this? I don't know. But there were people doing that for a while, and you know, now we're seeing the truth of all of this. Um, look up what they did in California this a few weeks ago. I'll be putting this along with other things in an upcoming video. But look what they did in California. The Democrats passed a child prostitution bill, like legalizing. A child prostitution in California. So that's what you get when you start exposing things like Pizzagate, because it just, in a lot of ways, is going to have to speed up uh, their process, I think. You know, I really think in Pizzagate's one of those examples where we're literally battling the revelation of the method. You know, these are things that these sickos really do, these shadow controllers, these people in uh, higher places and secret societies, you know, pulling the strings, right? But really, that's stuff they're into. And we've talked a lot about that in the past, but you know, they get power from this. That gets more into the satanic ritual abuse side of it all. But there's energy and power they get from uh, hurting the innocent, killing the innocent, abusing the innocent, the pure. You know, the younger, the better for some of these people. So... So it's all coming out, and I think they know it, and now it's a battle and a race to see who gets what out first and what lens it's put under. You know, the world, this beast system, I think, will try to, as they have been you know, indoctrinating us for years, they'll try to make this uh, not such a bad thing or not such a big deal. 
And uh, it's everywhere in media. You see it all the time. The, the underlying themes of these creepy pedo uh, type ideas and pedos in Hollywood. And it's all over. TV shows, movies, commercials. And it's all around us. You know, it's, that's the social engineering aspect of it. And it's also the predictive programming. So that when all this stuff starts coming to light, like what they did in California, you don't really hear much about it. Or most people don't really care, unfortunately. So yes, yes, Pizzagate. I'll cover it on a bigger level, like all the, the stuff here in a video upcoming soon. Still compiling stuff on it. Like I said, man, that's a hot, uh, it's a hot potato. Um, every other day there's something new, it seems. So let's see here. Hi, Catlo, how you doing? I keep scrolling down here some. See what else we got. Uh, somebody says your thoughts on abortion. Oh, hold on. I'm sorry, man. It looks like it's freezing up again. Uno momento. Hmm. Ugh, ugh, sorry, it just froze up again. But I will do the Google, Google Chrome thing next time. It seems to be the right way to go about with this. So sorry, thanks for your patience, guys. Um, when, I, when I slow down the chat and try to read your comments, that's when it's happening. It's like the whole screen just freezes up for a second. So I'm trying, but thanks again for your patience, okay? And uh, Clockwork Elves, CJ Live says, Yes, well, I just had talked to a friend recently about their DMT experience, and uh, they didn't see the Clockwork Elves. I don't know if everybody gets a chance to see them, but the Clockwork Elves apparently uh, are, are entities or beings that many people under the influence of DMT have reported seeing and encountering and even engaging with and having conversations. Uh, let's see here. Dominic Bennett says in all capitals, I am an alpha male after taking Alex Jones super male vitality. <laughs> nice. Hippie chick, how you doing? I'm happy those rings are being exposed too. Creston Blumen says thoughts on Jesus. Uh, he's my best friend. Uh, he's what it's all about. And um, he's everything. That's what I think. Ultimately, and by extension, of course, God, our Heavenly Father. You know, it's all, it's, it's a package deal for me, but that's, yeah. What's up, Tina? Good to see you. Pooty Tang's here. Good to see you. Oh, somebody said keep going. It's not freezing up. Okay, well, see, my screen acts weird on this side, and then even my little arrow on my mouse starts kind of spinning, so I figured you guys can't hear me, but I'll just keep going. Thanks for that. Thanks for the heads up. Yeah, Iron Man, that Stranger Things Season 2 trailer, I'm pretty psyched for it as well, but, uh, you know, again, uh, it's all about du uh, duality and uh, the upside down, is that what it, it's called? But uh, the whole commercial starts with L upside down, opening our eyes, right? E-L. And we feel like we've talked about ELL on this, this channel or some of these shows before too, but lots of symbolism there, lots of symbolism through the whole show. And it's like your world is turning upside down. And again, this is why we see that, uh, you know, the checkerboard in so many things, all right? There's a lot of duality symbolism with the Masonic checkerboard. It's why we see a lot of these, well, even um, so many pyramids in front of reflecting poles. It's the diamond, right? So it's another thing with the diamond, but it also, that's another reflecting pole, as above, so below. And what else? Um, what else? Oh, I just saw one the other day. I saw a guy walking around with a shirt, and it was two pyramids connected at the apex, one on top of the other. You know, just it's that duality world, as above, so below. It's all around us. So, yeah, it's in that Netflix, too. Uh, it's, it was in Netflix, the series, and now it's in Netflix, too. Um, but I'm kind of a geek, like I like sci-fi, horror to some degree, not as much as I used to. I like monster movies and stuff, and it's just the way I've always been. Uh, you know, big fan of a robot, okay, uh, in a movie, usually a killer robot. If it's a killer robot, then I'm all for it, <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, and, and, and uh, Stranger Things pretty much has it all, like if you're a geeky type guy or gal and you like geeky type things you'll probably really like the show 
But that's the beauty of us being awake and having eyes, you know, we can see through any kind of programming they may be trying to do or predictive programming or social engineering or even symbolism. Uh, these wicked intentions on some of these shows, again, not saying exactly stranger things, but on some of these shows, there are really wicked intentions and that's where the symbols are placed. But now that you're awake, I'm awake, we're all awake. So many of us are, and we see these things for what they are. Uh, those wicked intentions can no longer affect you. It's spiritual warfare, man. This is real stuff. You know, the mysteries are all being revealed by some of us out here in the streets. <laughs> There's a bunch of us. And then by the people in the lodge, you know, and in the shadows. So, so that's what's up. What's up, Twit? How are you? Good to see you. Strongman, how are you? Uh, let's see. Chris has, says, have you heard of Anthony Patch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Richie from Boston's talked to him a few times. I've I've listened to some Anthony Patch. He's really interesting with the CERN information. If you guys are interested in CERN, you should check that out. Anthony Patch, CERN. So I'm going to try one more time to kind of slow down this chat for a second and say hi. And then in just a little bit, I'll be bringing uh, my first guest on here, okay? So, and I don't even know what to expect. Okay, I'm telling you the truth. You'll see. He'll tell you. <laughs> We've just been talking in email, and uh, I like doing it this way. I like to keep it organic and have people on fresh so we can all kind of get to know them together and see what they're wanting to talk about. And uh, this gentleman seems to have a lot of subjects he's interested in that I'm interested in, so we'll see. Okay? Are you with me on this, guys? We'll see what happens. All right? Let's see here. What do we got? Uh, B felt. What's up, B? Says any plans on where you're gonna go live? Gonna live now? Staying in America, man. I'm staying. Uh, I'm staying in America. You know, as I always say, this guy bleeds red, white, and blue. All right. I'm just kidding. That's horrible. I'm such a nationalist. Uh, no, I'm back, and it's really more about family and friends and just reconnecting with people, meeting new people out here, and. Uh, where I'm at and it's been good, you know, it's good. I feel like this is, you know, I feel like this is where, where my father wants me. Okay. I feel like this is it. So, uh, and it feels right. It feels good. So, you know, that's the plan. Maybe travel in a couple of years back down South, uh, go, go see a few places. I don't know, you know, maybe, maybe, but I really have no want or need to, to do that now. Like I'm cool being back in America, you know, um, but Paul Revere says Pizzagate hides reptilian hybrid killing of children exclamation point what's up Jules Believer I don't know I've, I've covered that subject so many times I think it's really interesting I told you I'm a huge dork for the uh, lizard man of South Carolina this is a really interesting story he's been out there since 88 you know they've been having sightings of this thing for a long time and it scratches up people's cars and their doors and all kinds of stuff. And lots of people out there uh, have come forward and talked about their experiences. So, you know, maybe I'm just a sucker. I don't know. But uh, I think it's very interesting stuff. Um, and then you get the reptilian caves under Los Angeles. That's not a conspiracy theory. That's actually real. And then we've got people's eyes. Sometimes there's not a lot of great, you know, so many bogus videos on YouTube, but some of these are really legit, I think. And you know, sometimes you'll see these videos of some of these people's eyes and they're obviously a demonic slit, a snake eye or snake eyes. So now I always attribute that more to demonic possession, like the demon filled people that some of these people are when they manifest this stuff. But uh, I am interested in that. I don't know. You know, I, I, I don't believe a lot of David Icke's reptilian theory and all that stuff. Um, I don't know, you know, like I said, I'm interested. I want to know more. Um, I want to believe, <laughs> I guess. Oh, uh, let's see what we got. Hi, Sylvia. Thanks. Still scrolling down. Um, hi, Amanda Bates. How are you? She says, KJ, do you think Michelle Obama might be a secret? Okay, hold on a second. Let me check. Because it looks like my... Uh, my screen's telling me it's not responding, so I don't know. Give me a second here, guys. It's acting weird. There we go. Let's see what happens. 
Freezing up again, I think. Okay, there we go. All right, now we're back. Like I said, I'll, I'll do the Google Chrome next time because I guess it has to do with... Uh, I guess it has to do with with chat and being on Mozilla. So that's what that is. So let's see. 519 Forest Monk says, KJ, does, does this chat serve less of a purpose for you now than it did in Costa Rica now that you have more of a support network? We love you too. Thanks, man. I love you guys too. For real though. For, for reals though. No, I really do. I love you guys, man. Um, no, not at all. Uh, definitely don't feel like this serves less of a purpose at all. You know, that was kind of my lifeline to so many people. But, you know, really, that's just what got it started. This is going to continue. I know I don't do it every week. Sometimes I have things going on and I can't. But this is going to continue. You know, I'm, I'm going to continue doing this. It's great. Uh, I learn a lot from you guys as well. I get some of my greatest leads, you know, story ideas from the people that watch me and listen to me. So I appreciate you. It's a community as well. You know, um, I never started doing this because... You know, it wasn't more, oh, I need more money, you know, or, gee, I want attention. It was never anything like that. It was like, it's just as refreshing for me to talk to you guys, a community, knowing that I'm not really the crazy one, okay? There's a bunch of us, all right? And I don't think we're all crazy. We think outside mainstream narratives. We have questions. We're critical thinkers. We're also spiritually led. Um it's beautiful, man. So I need this and I still need this probably even more than ever. You know, sometimes, you know, we can't talk about all this stuff with the people in our lives that we love, you know, people close to us and you feel even more like an alien sometimes. Right. So this is our safe space. All right. Triggered. No, this is our, this is a, a good place for us all to come uh, that have kind of like minds and these minds are all very open and they're individual and I think it's wonderful and it's a place we can all meet and feel a little more normal at least, right? Being able to discuss different things and share things and I think it's really cool. So, yeah, you know, I hope that answers that. hope I wasn't just rambling. I want to scroll down a bit more and let's see what else we got and then here in just a little bit I'll be bringing you on, man. Let's see. Hey, it's experimental vaccines. And I hope you can hear me because I want give me one second because the top of my screen again is saying no response. So give me a sec. Let's make sure that goes away. And I think it is. But if not, hopefully if you can hear me. Hi, experimental vaccines. Good to see you. Okay, cool. We're back. I was just saying hi to experimental vaccines. I saw them. What's up, Donna? Good to see you. Hi. And let's see what else we got here. All right. I'm going to go ahead and uh, and bring on my first guest, I believe. So let me, I got to send him a link over here in chat. And we'll go from there. Angelo is his name. So give me one second. I'm going to grab that link. And I put it over on your Skype. Okay, Angelo, if you can hear me. And we'll do it like that. So let me go here all right all right angelo i'm giving you the link you just have to log into your skype and it'll be right there okay so let's see if that went through all right cool there you have it and let's see if he can join us here in just a second guys thanks for your patience uh it should stop cutting out now because i won't be messing with chat for a little bit i won't be stopping it it's when i started stopping the chat that it started freezing up and acting all weird. So now I'm just waiting to see if uh, Angelo can join us and we're gonna see where it goes from there, okay? So I'm jumping back over here real quick to the chat and I think, oh, it's because Angelo, you have to log into your Skype is why that is. You make go up to the top of your page and make sure you're actually on, like active or whatever. I do that all the time. I think that's probably what that is. So just a second. Experimental Vaccines asks, is God a man? It's a question for the people in the, in the audience. You got an Angelo? Cool. Let's see if this goes through. And I'm not sure what device you're on, but if you're on a computer, just be careful. The computer will, or the uh, camera will come on automatically. So 
if you're wearing one of those like adult onesies or you know like some kind of a weird outfit you know just be careful i don't mind what you wear or anybody but just so you know some people get surprised oh, there he is i'm rambling i'm rambling and being a goofball but uh, can you hear me man hey, they love your rambling man <laughs> cool hey it's good to hear from you angelo how are you you as well um I'm, I'm great i'm great how are you i'm good i'll just tell the folks here um Angela is a friend of mine here on YouTube, been a sub of mine for a while here on YouTube. He sent me some emails. We talked back and forth. Um, he's got a lot, a lot of different subjects he's interested in and uh, it's all the same stuff I am as well. And, you know, I try to sometimes have you guys on, you know, if you guys want to come on, you can always email me and we'll set it up. And I was starting that a few weeks back, but of course the accident held everything up. So now we're getting caught up and bringing some new people in as well. I wanted to bring Angelo on and, and just run with it and see what happens. Get a couple like minds on here together. Um, Angelo, does that sound good to you? And maybe you can tell us a, a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, um, it, it's just a search for truth that we're all, uh, that we all have in common, you know? Yeah. And yeah. It's, uh, I mean, uh, like when I first found you, it was that a uh, Hollywood insider video and it, it just had popped up cause, uh, you know how it works. Uh, they, they'll throw videos on that are like, uh, stuff you watch and that, and that, and that thing popped up and it's a silhouette of a, oh, yeah. of a lady, you know what I'm talking about. And, uh, and, and I listened to that and I was just like, oh wow. You know, cause I'm from Los Angeles and, um, I'm from uh, Granada Hills up in uh, San Fernando Valley. Oh, cool. And, okay, I know the area. Man, I used to, man, I used to, I think my old security company I worked for was out. They started off in Burbank, but I know that area. But go ahead. Yeah, it's right over there. I mean, the, the whole valley is one little cohesive unit. You know, it's it's just separated by the, uh, um, by the, uh, um, the big hill. And then you go over the hill and then you're in Hollywood and then Santa Monica, so on. You know, and uh, um, but yeah, like uh, you were saying something about uh, you used to be in movies or something, or you used to write, or yeah, yeah, uh, I uh, you know I was just like on the bottom rung of everything, but I I went to film school, went out there, I worked in reality TV for several years, uh, well, and I that did was a trip. It was cool. I did a lot of. <laughs> I was a production assistant, but I got to do some cool jobs and. And then um, I had the a, observation sounds uh, sounds fun. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It's man. I, well, you know, it also helps to shatter your, uh, you know, to shatter the control that stuff has over us when you work behind the scenes. Some and see it, you know, right. <laughs> But that was cool. I did uh, a bunch of stuff, central casting. So I've been background a bunch of stuff. You know, central casting oh, wow. out there, and uh, um, yeah. had an agent. Had a lot of meetings and stuff, but never really got anything huge. Had a lot of close calls but yeah it was just like that i never really broke through to anything but but i liked it had a lot of great friends and you know it was uh i, I was just like any other writer good money too right what's that good money too right well it could be it wasn't ever really for me i mean i made working production on those tv shows you make like 500 oh, they, a week. yeah no i i know how they do you like i had some i had a friend that was uh he would go and uh audition to be a, um like a, an extra and they'll give you like uh, 300 bucks or something if if you're lucky or whatever but yeah they they'll uh they basically feed you feed you little little treats yeah or that's whatever it. and then cut you off <laughs> yeah yeah and you know you make well you can get uh, i don't know I can't remember the terminology, but there's three different yellow cards you can get from doing background work. If you get chosen, they'll give you this card. And then uh, you can pay a thousand bucks and get your SAG. And then you make like three or 500 bucks every background show you do. But I was only making about 70 bucks a day for a 12 hour oh, day. Wow. Jeez, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't working a restaurant. <laughs> it, it, it really was. Yeah. I mean, like you said, the reality shows, depending on how long you were there sometimes you could rise up but i did get to do a lot of cool stuff and this is a random thought it's on my channel if people want to see it uh, we were talking earlier about you know reptilians and people's eyes this is no joke but the best demon type picture i've ever seen is one that i have on my channel and i i got I it saw I that it was that guy that was eating uh, metal or something well i don't know it's hard to tell but what it is is it was on hell's kitchen i worked on hell's kitchen a couple oh. seasons 
And one of the camera guys, or electric guys, we were there late one night, but he was wanting to take a picture of the HK sign through some glass doors, and he snapped it. And on one of the glass doors, y'all can look up Hell's Kitchen demon picture, but on one of the glass doors, I swear to you, it is one of the freakiest. And I was there that night, and I know it's not a hoax. They didn't set it up. These guys, everybody was freaking out on the crew, and I got a copy of it. And uh, it's amazing. Yeah. I don't doubt it. It's scary, yeah, it but I love stuff like stuff. that. I love stuff like that, not because I like the devil, but because it just shows you the truth of what we're up. Oh, yeah. speaking of which, I just want to, I just want to tell, I just want to tell everybody this. You know, you scarred me for life, man. Like, uh, oh boy. you you got this, <laughs> you got this clip. Uh, I I never seen the whole movie or whatever, but I think it's that uh that movie Hostel, where this old guy has got this dude strapped to this this gurney or whatever and he's like eating him while he's alive and cooking it like cutting piece of his leg off going cooking it going to the table and going eating it it was it was on one of your uh little videos or whatever man i can't get that i can't get that out of my head man <laughs> Well, that honestly, the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, I don't even remember that one. Now that could have been. I, I had, I've had a a lot of videos removed from YouTube, but that well, it's be one. it's because you it's because you're the. I mean, it's the scariest movie ever. You you're a big horror flick fan, you know. Like, but that one, I don't know, man. That one takes the cake. Yeah, I like, just can't remember that one. I'm sorry, man. No, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it may have been. Uh, like I said, I, I had some really hardcore ones removed over the years because, you know, I mean, that was that was initially that was initially part of my approach was you know it's good to kind of um, shock people, shock, shock people, people yeah, things, yeah, you know. And well, I, it, 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 it down, snatches but, their attention, is what it does. It does. Let me ask you a question. This is just because we're just kind of riffing back and forth. Ask, um, ask, ask anything. Man. Some of the best uh, UFO orb footage I've seen has been over Los Angeles. In fact, I lived out there when that when that uh, missile, the mystery missile launch over LA. Uh, no one knew yeah, who did you it. know what? I was up here when that happened. Um, you too? Because well, I, I was uh, I was up here when it happened or whatever. I've seen like footage of it or whatever, and I heard from some people down there. Um, because uh, normally I'll, I'll be living uh, up here in uh, Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and then uh, down in uh, Pasadena. But um, over the last uh, year and a half or whatever, I've been I've been strictly up here. But um, yeah, no, when that happened, um, I was up here. But I saw it, and that, I mean that was a. Uh, do you remember back like I don't know, man? Like it was, I think it was uh, early two thousands, where. Bush Jr. had uh, the like missile. He was testing a missile defense system, and you could. It was when I was living in San Diego, and you could see it. And they had it on newspapers or whatever. But there was these three streaks in the sky: the green one, a blue one, and and a yellow one. You know what I'm talking about? No, but that's really interesting. It. And I've never, I've I've never been able to find out what it is. You know, I. I, I I fail to ask that question when when I'm around uh, when I'm getting to talk to people that would know that. But, That's a good um, one. Maybe the people in chat will know. And I, I want to for the people in chat just to in case they hadn't heard what we're talking about when when I was out in LA. But and this made mainstream like world news actually. But there was a literal a, a missile launch over LA. I mean, it was a missile contrail or whatever, and nobody claimed it, and it was still a mystery. Like everyone acted, and we don't know who did it or where it went. I and mean, that was one of the weirdest things I remember. It when looked I was out strange there. too. It wasn't yeah. like it wasn't normal. Like, I mean, it was glowing in the sky like at night, you know, and it wasn't like a like like what a missile would look like, you know. It was weird. Well, what about now back to the UFOs because there've been a lot out there. Have you seen any yeah, of those? Yeah, well, see, okay, check this out. Um I you know what? I saw one the the ones that I've seen um have been up here. It's crazy cuz I live like 30 miles south of Yellowstone. Oh, and by the way, I just want to let everybody know this when they when they say that the the road is melting and the sky is falling in in uh, Yellowstone. It's, yeah, it's nonsense. It's not true. It's I, I live up here. There, I, I've I've felt I've felt one or I've I've felt one earthquake here, um, in the last year, and it was tiny. Like I mean, if you're from LA, you know what I'm talking about. You, you don't even get out of bed for most of them. That's and this true. was one. This was one of those. And um, the only other earthquake I ever felt here was back in 92 when we first came here. 
and um it was the day we got here and that was a bigger one than uh this this one was but uh yeah, like there's there's nothing going on in uh in Yellowstone. There, the the bison aren't running away from the from the. Uh, <laughs> Good. I'm, I'm, I, hey, I'm glad you're covering this because people have been making videos on. Yes, Yellowstone and, and, and it bugs me, man, because I'm right here and I'm right there. Like I, I I'm with. I could go drive up there right now, you know. Like and it's uh it, no, like it, that's not what's happening. <laughs> that's it's, good uh, to know, man. It's so you guys don't you know what I believe I believe that's part of uh, the, their agenda 21 to push us into the cities because they don't want us up in these rural areas and especially because I mean I used to work at this country club called uh, Teton Pines and that's where Dick Cheney lives. This is his this is where uh, Bush hides his dick. Oh nice. Yeah. This is the, this is the undisclosed location is right here. This is like uh, Illuminati headquarters right here. Is uh, most of the places like uh, th this county is seventy five percent millionaires, and the rest of us are just like you know scratching by, um, <laughs> and uh, but yeah, like there, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, heavy hitters out here. Like uh, Harrison Ford lives on the other side of this big uh, field from me, except I have a normal house. He has a giant house, and he has a launch pad for his helicopter on his uh on his property there was some people stuck up on this uh this big mountain over here the grand teton which means big tit in french <laughs> and uh it's this giant mountain it's beautiful or whatever but there's some climbers stuck up there and he uh, uh and old han solo went up there and saved these people in his helicopter yeah did you hear what he did a couple days ago no uh -uh. Wait, so he uh, wound up landing his plane in the wrong place, like in, in an air on an airport. To, uh, he was pro he's probably smoking too many blunts. You know, you know he's down with that. Because yeah, he's a well-known weed smoker. Yes, so he yes, got he really is. blazed and was like rut row. You know, I, I thought I was flying the Blunial Falcon or something or whatever, and just kind of you know. <laughs> but yeah, he's uh, he's a character, but he can get away with that stuff. Oh <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course. Well, it's it's Harrison Ford. What's anybody gonna do? They, they you should see people when they uh. When like whenever he, he'll be in town, like coming out of a restaurant or something, and people like like uh, like they don't know what to do. It's like it's, he's just a person, you know. Like, <laughs> and I I don't I don't uh, I don't understand that sometimes people get all starstruck, you know. Is <laughs> can you hear me? Ooh, I think I think you got cut off, or I did. Says I'm on. Hmm. Hello. I don't know if this is working, but. Huh. Hello? Huh. Hello? Hello? He's cutting us off, boy. Let's see here. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? <laughs> this is crazy. What? Look at the chat room. Can you guys hear me? Drop some truth. <laughs> oh, <laughs> did he get caught? Oh, did he got cut off? Can you guys hear me? All right, cool. Oh, uh, Harrison Ford, y'all want y'all want some uh, y'all want some dirt, huh? All right. Um, now back in high school, y'all got to keep this on DL or whatever. But uh, 
Yeah, no, um, I, I definitely personally know he'd be down with that chronic. Um, <laughs> back uh, in high school, uh, the guy who taught me how to DJ, he was best friends with uh, Malcolm, who was uh, Harrison Ford's son. So um, I actually got to see a few things. Uh, but um, that that's all you guys get for right now. <laughs> Where is uh, where's KJ at? He he got cut off. He left me on here, so I got to hold it down. All right. <laughs> so how are you guys doing in there? Look at this. Wow. Now this is a beautiful thing. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I see you there, KJ. Oh, my goodness. Dude, hold on, man. I think you muted me. Oh, there you go. How did... That's crazy. I didn't, I didn't mute you. I don't, I don't even know how to do that. <laughs> Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Damn. This thing's like... Uh, okay, now that should be better. Can you guys go. hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, let's see if the chat... Man, it's always... I tell you, dude, this kind of stuff happens all the time on this of show with me. It does. What? You know they mess with you. I guess. I've seen, with you. I've, seen, I've seen it happen a few times. Right when you get into something real juicy, it'll just like cut you off. That sucks, man. It's okay. Well, let me see. Let's look in the chat. Now I'm seeing people say they can hear me. So, yeah, they could hear me the whole time. So, well, I heard you trying to hold it down. So, thanks, man. I appreciate <laughs> it. No problem. I was over by the sliding glass door. I had to go back over by the TV and look at the look at the yeah. chat. And I saw you in there. And then I'm like, why can't I hear him? And I'm like, because oh, it's, it's my end's working. Well, let's. I'm looking at the chat to see if they can hear me now. Um, I don't hear anybody saying or don't see them say anything yet so let's see it's a, it's a little bit behind yeah uh, no it, i have chrome i have chrome and it works well like you know i think those uh those internet explorer uh apps or whatever for the normal pcs they're they're boo boo man like they, they just they um they, they're uh very um susceptible to getting viruses and like malware and all that stuff yeah well I don't know. I'm going to, and you know, like I said, somebody suggested earlier I use Chrome. I just never have, but I guess I might as well. I've always used Mozilla, but anyway, it looks like they can hear, hear us now. Is that better? Yeah. Okay, good. Definitely. Now I, okay, now it looks like, okay, I think we're good, but. Well, where, did you get, where did you get that, uh, what you started the thing with, and, wh and wh why did you choose that, the, the Babylon thing? You know, like, because uh, that was the, that's the last actual song that I started writing. Well, you know, it's, in, uh, it's a good question, and I want to hear that, too, about your song. But because oh, we, we also talk about your music. But I do these things sometimes just an hour before, you know, and I, I really pray about stuff. You know, I'm not trying to act like, you know, that God told me to, you know. Yeah, no, I, and I appreciate that, you know, because I hear a lot of people on, on their channels like, God told me this, God told me that. How do you know? You know, it's like, cause, uh, yeah, I, I used to, um, I used to talk to Fritz Springmeier, uh, a little bit. Oh, did you? And, yeah. And, um, it's like back, back in 2010, um, I, 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 like I had the computer set up and, and I'd come up here and I was with, uh, I was with my mom hanging out and, uh, I finally, uh, I finally got it in my head that I was like, hey, they got audio books on this YouTube thing here, you know, because I didn't really use it before that much. Um, and 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 I, I finally decided to look up this uh, this book title that I had always heard in rap songs and like never really n knew much about. And it was uh, Behold a Pale Horse. Yeah, that's a and, great book. Yeah. And yeah. And uh, no. And we listened to that whole thing that that night and and we were just looking at each other like jaws dropped to the floor because uh my mom was into that new age stuff her whole life like i mean i have a rosicrucian book here that was given to her like you have to be given books like this you can't just go buy it like like and we have a whole house full of uh, of of these rare like uh, brotherhood type books like and i never even realized what we had in here until after this awakening that occurred after i, I heard uh that behold a pale horse and um this book it's it's a uh, the the rosicrucian cosmo conception 
the Rosicrucian Fellowship. This book is from 1929. It's like barely held together. And it, um, can you hear me? Oh, yeah, I'm listening. Um, in okay. fact, I want to okay. add something quickly and keep going. But, okay. I just, I, but, but actually, before you do, I want to just say something here because I'm also watching chat as we go. And, you know, and I, I'm just going to point this out. I don't, you don't even need to go look at this because chat's going fast. But a couple people were like, oh, you know, I don't know if I like this guest, you know, stuff like this. Guys, um, look, we're all real people. Angela is a real person. He's a friend of ours. He's a brother of ours and all of this, you know, and, and I've had other people complain about other guests in the past in the chat as well. Um, we are, these are real people. I love talking to Angelo. I've loved talking to everybody I've had on here and I'm not just saying that, you know, it's good to get different perspectives and keep an open mind. And, you know, just cause Angelo does, hasn't written a book about this stuff or whatever, you know, it doesn't make him or anybody else any less of a guest. That's just my it's opinion. Not- is that that's the problem see once they once I, once I get to 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 telling you all the rest of it or whatever they'll understand keep going it's fine man um okay well check this out all right my mom was always uh she was into channeling you know and uh she uh she used to channel this spirit quote well we didn't know it was a demon before but we know now and um it, named baba g you ever heard no it's uh, supposed to be an ascended master or whatever. And uh, I used to always make fun of her about all this stuff because she would take me to these, uh, these, little, um, these little groups that, that she would have with their other, well, apparently witch buddies, you know. <laughs> yeah. but, they, see, but they didn't see it like that. They were, you, you know how new age people are most of the time. Like they're, they, they don't mean to be doing evil shit. Well, they some do. of them, I think, yeah, some but go ahead. Do, some of them do, but, like, these ones, no. Like, they, they're they just, like, uh, they didn't know what they were getting into, basically. I know what you mean. A lot of, like, a lot of the kind of hippie-ish more type into crystals yes. and peace yes, and love. Yes, yes, right. like, like uh, Sedona, right. Arizona. Oh, Sedona, Arizona type people, yeah. Um, yeah, and because my mom's uh, 70, so, um, yeah, older hippie type, and... um. So, and, and we, we never, uh, we, we didn't know the Bible. We didn't know Jesus Christ then. So it was, uh, well, okay. So, so we, we get through with the, with the listening to behold a pale horse. And then we, and then that began this whole, um, journey of me doing research. And, um, like, like at the time, um, I, I was able to, um, I was able to spend all my time doing research, like 24 seven. All the time, like so from, let's say, um, August of 2010 till now, um, I've been spending probably 340 days a year doing research all day, every day. And um, and because you know what, once you get a little taste, you just got to keep on going. You know, it's uh, because it's it's just it's like Doyle's told me, he said it was it's an onion. You peel back one layer, and there's another one, and then there's another, and there's another, and you got to keep going and going, because it's uh, there's so much truth that's been kept from us that we have to go and discover on our own, and there's so um, and and especially with the internet the way it is now, and there's all these disinfo um channels and stuff, and and you got to read. Yeah, you got a real. You have to have that real discernment in order to be able to to hear the real and separate it from the fake. Yeah, no, you really do. I mean, there's just it's like you said. I mean, a lot of people equate uh, computers and knowledge that we get from computers to to the prophecies of Daniel in the Bible, even right. Yeah. So, and we really are in a time where you can learn anything anytime really quick. So yes, yeah, so it's totally infiltrated, and, I'm and we got to we got to realize who created the internet in the first place and why. You know, that's that's one of the questions that one has to ask themselves when they go and they trust everything that they find on the Internet instead of going to the library, instead of going to a law library. You know what I mean? Like, like Yeah. That. Yeah. No, it's I mean, we'll look at, uh, you know, uh, there's so many different psyops that have come up in the so-called truth community in the last few years. And uh, I know it upsets people, but it, it's whatever. But, you know, I, I'm still not really into the flat earth thing. And I definitely you know, think that's, a lot of it. Was talking about this earlier um with my mom and i was like you know what okay because 
we, we, we know for a fact that they lie to us about space because space is a vacuum and, um, and temperature does not exist in a vacuum. <laughs> sure. It's, it, it's, it's the same reason why your um, thermos keeps your coffee hot. Because it, um, when, if you put a hot liquid in there, a cold liquid in there, the vacuum keeps it at that same temperature for as long, for a much longer period because it's a vacuum. But temperature does not exist in a vacuum, and the sun, um, it, 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 it only, um, it, it only heats something when it hits matter. And space is a big void, right? So they say. Yeah, and okay, but um, but you, you read the Bible. You got to read it carefully. You got to read it carefully, folks. Um, it, it says there's a firmament. You know, okay, so there's a dome, and there's supposed to be water above it. There was water below it before. That's what caused the flood. Now there's that. There, there's not that water there, but there's a firmament, and then there's supposed to be water over it. But it never once says that the Earth is flat. It sa it says that the Earth doesn't move. It says that there's a firmament, which means that there's a there's a there's a barrier around it, that that it's an enclosed unit, and 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 you can't get out, and and nothing's really getting in either, you know. It's but um, but that that's the whole thing is it doesn't actually say that it's flat. But yeah, you know, yeah, no, I've I've appreciated some people's work on that that find the truth maybe somewhere more in the middle, you know, between the idea of just being a globe and then also I uh, with it being flat. I just don't believe what they tell us. <laughs> yeah because i mean that's the safest thing you can go with and then the safest thing that you can believe is scripture i agree and let me ask you on that note too is uh, what about your own kind of testimony uh do you do you have any kind of testimony story that uh, have you ever read, did, did you read the did, have you ever read it i posted it on my uh on my google plus no um, i haven't had a chance to you you want me to read it i'll read it yeah, I, I always, I always like to hear people's testimonies when they come on here. And you then know, I think, go ahead. I like, I definitely like to read it because it's, uh, it, I, I'd be too jumbled up if I just uh, gave you the whole story and uh, and I'd go off on tangents. So, um, let me. Okay. I'll give you the whole thing right here. Um, I wrote this back in December. I was watching, um, I was watching a couple of Vice, um documentaries one was on fentanyl and one was on heroin and um just watching these people you know like uh that that were suffering from these addictions it was just uh it, it really grips you you know like uh the despair you know the um intervention the yeah well i know i mean like the the way that these people would talk like they 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 they, they would talk like suicide was the was uh, like a good thing you know like because compared to what they were going through and sure. it's just horrible, you know like and um yeah here here we go <sighs> let's see i wrote this as a comment on a vice heroin addiction documentary i now give you the cure for addiction enjoy and please share with whoever you can this message is intended for those in despair who have thought suicide will free them. Rest in peace to my friend Gregory Rickman Jr. Rest in peace, Levi Dowell. Your sacrifices were not in vain. I will love you both always, and I was never mad at either one of you for taking your own lives. I just miss both of you every day. It's... The powerful have stuff that does not hurt or kill them that has minimal negative side effects if any at all the poisons that the poisons they create and spread across the world are for us normal folk they are not subjected to the same life they have forced upon everybody else these poisons are what happens when man takes god's creation and tampers with them it is called sorcery or pharmacia which could only well, which could have only originated in the cir <laughs> in circle nine in hell. Just look at the despair in these poor people's eyes. In their words, they have been forced. Or they have been thoroughly defeated and stripped of any hope within themselves. Which is why these poor victims speak of suicide as their best option. 
We have been deceived into chasing happiness and love in every place except the only cure to all the ills of this world. Happiness is impossible to achieve without Christ Yahshua. Not the church, not any religion. The Bible is all anybody needs to read, and they can do all they can do that all alone and without anybody else corrupting what they read. That book has every answer to every question, and it has the cure for the curse of the flesh. And that is available to any human, no matter their sins, prior to receiving his grace. I had to be all alone in great, great despair without a single person or thing that could take the pain or stress and loneliness and pain and terrible sadness that I was feeling from me. It brought me to weeping so uncontrollably and all I wanted was for the burden I had taken upon myself to accumulate by making the people I knew as safe from it as I could, and it eventually broke me. I was stronger than others, but to believe that I could do that forever was arrogance. When I was finally broken, that arrogance was gone. No pride, no sense of superiority, and I did not want to kill myself because my best friend did that when I was 15. The only thing I could think to do that could possibly help me from losing uh, my will to live was to beg Christ to help me, to change me. I said I did not want to sin anymore. I hated sinning because I did. I had so much water coming out of my eyes. My shirt was where uh, the shirt I was wearing was soaked. My hands were wet from being in my lap beneath my chin. I, I literally said, Jesus, please help me. Like I, 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 was, uh, I was weeping uncontrollably when I said it, and, and, and I said it with like everything I had in me. You know, I'm surprised somebody didn't hear it outside. Um, I cannot do this without you. I was hopeless, and I never would have put that on anybody else because they could not take all, the, uh, all of it away and cleanse my heart and make me feel brand new. So after I did this, I was still sitting on my bed at 3 a.m., July 2nd, 2015, and nothing happened. I never believed prior that asking would miraculously fix me. I had asked before by being pressured by others, and nothing happened. That was because it was not from my heart, not honest, not pure, not real. Um, and, and, and I didn't believe it. I didn't mean it. So about 12, 15 minutes laying down, still weeping gallons out of my eyes, something happened. It was the most intense physical sensation I have ever felt. And from my head and out of my feet, every drop of negative feelings, thoughts, pain, despair, and the 90 mile per hour nonstop vile thoughts I had in my mind for as long as I could remember were all gone instantly. My mind was empty and peaceful for the first time. My tears stopped and the pure and most amazing feeling without any negative effects had taken my heart and cleansed it. And it took about 32 hours of uh, laying downstairs on my couch ear-to-ear -ear smile for my body uh, to get used to this feeling that uh, what, what I now know to be the Holy Spirit. That amazing feeling never left either. And from that moment on, anytime I sinned, it would convict me of my own wrongdoing within my heart, which after the miracle I experienced, I was determined not to go against knowing that sin was wrong. But I honestly believe when we sin that the Holy Spirit feels that pain from it. And the guilt from doing that leads you to stop sinning. And I had more sin than anybody I had ever met in my life. Anybody I still know. And I'm not fully without sin today. But I am completely headed in the opposite direction than I was before. Instead of gaining it, I'm tapering it off. and um. And the, the way I was before, I had no future. This is the only way 
to have a true future. I have not felt fear since that night. I have forgotten what it feels like. If redemption was available to me through surrender to Jesus Christ, then there is redemption for all. This entire statement is as detailed and verbatim to exactly what happened. I experienced something that the powerful people of the world have known exists. They have done everything possible to keep you, you, from this exact truth. That is also why most churchgoers have never actually read the Bible from start to finish. They have been deceived into not learning from God, but from those infiltrators posing as their friends, pastors, preachers. Um, and and uh, some of them don't even know what they're doing. Um, I, at one time in my life, would see the hypocrisy of these churchgoers and blame it on the book. I was wrong. When I read the book alone, Without any outside influence, it was because I had discovered that the powerful people of the world had one goal, and that was the most important to them, and that is stripping the divinity of Jesus Christ in the perception of the people of the world and to stop us from reading the book for ourselves. So I read it, and it was the truth. I couldn't deny it. The miracle did not happen, though, till last year. Well. When I wrote this, it was it was uh, last December. So um, the miracle did not happen, though, till last year. With was it it was two years after I had first read the Bible, and it did not true. I did not truly understand that it is literally true till the miracle happened to me. I was sober when the experience occurred, and no, I'm not insane or on anything, nor do I need anything. Doubt it not that even the most impossible of miracles is possible through Christ. You must ask him, and you must believe he hears you and will answer your prayers because he never denies anything to anybody who asks in his name. He said these very words. This is the only cure for addiction of every type. This is the only way to defeat all ills in your lives. And you only need him. It is my duty to share this anywhere that I believe it will be heard. I love you all. You don't have to, you don't have to love me back. That is the outcome of this transition. I never felt that way before. Because I had never been shown unconditional love. Nor love when I gave it. He showed me what it is. And that is how I know what it is and how it feels. And every last one of you aches every single day to know unconditional love. You cannot know it any other way. I have tried, believe me. <laughs> and Christ is the truth, the way, and the life. We just always failed to understand just how simple his teachings were and how powerful his sacrifice was. You will gain this great understanding through asking him to help change you from a weak, normal person who is fearful and not truly happy person into a strong, fearless rock of confidence and kindness who feels sad for uh, how sinful we have become and how the world is being led to accept sin and to preach tolerance of sin. And ultimately, they will say there is no sin. That is a lie to keep you all from finding out everything you have just read or heard. <laughs> if you follow these instructions, honestly, when the miracle occurs, do not thank me, thank him. I asked for the honor of earning my name last, <laughs> last March. Um, my name is Joseph Angelo. That literally means guardian angel or protector messenger of God. You can research its meaning for yourselves. It is an honor for me to take this time out to deliver the truth where normal postal workers never deliver. God bless you all. Um, That's it. <clears throat> my first thing I want to say is 
I probably speak for a lot of other people. I feel like reaching through the screen and just giving you a big hug and just telling, <laughs> you, <laughs> telling you with all the love I have to give. And I mean, is thank you uh, because well, I have, I have uh, my, uh, like it's the, you know, when the Holy spirit get, gets you or whatever and your eyes. Start it. Yes. <laughs> well, that's what I am right now. Like it's, Good. Uh, he had you, that was his, he went right through you, man. That message reached a lot of people and a lot of people that really needed to hear it. I guarantee you that. I know, and, and that, that's the mystery of, of why I like to keep it open and I just have different people on. And every single time I have somebody on, it's different things, but like that right there nails it for me, uh, along with everything else. No, I'm that, huh? about. It's great, it's powerful, and it's, it's good. And thank you. It's the best thing I've ever written, man. It's the best thing I've ever written, you know. And ever since I, I made that prayer, and you know, folks, I was in jail when that happened. And you know what? I I had no I had no uh, I had no other hope, but I had my faith. And you know what? I I, I read it um, in the Old Testament. It says to believe that you will be heard and answered when you uh, when you pray. And uh, and and I really did, you know. And um, and and instead of asking, like people try to use God as a genie or like a like uh, um, a magic wand or something, you know, like here, do yeah. this for me. Like, instead of machine. like, what can I do for you instead? You know, like, and, uh, and that's where I came from. That's where I came from when I said it, you know, like uh, I, I said, cause I read that, you know, he said, I named you. I knew you before you were born. I know how the number of hairs on your head. And when, when I read that, I was like, <laughs> You, you know, just wrapping my mind around that, uh, I was just like, man, you know, like, I, I really need to do this. The, I, I, like, I, I can't be a hypocrite like the same people that, that drove me away from it. You know, I got to be the opposite of that and do do what the book tell me to do. Good stuff, man. Hey, um, I'm going to go ahead and start segueing over a little bit as well right now. And uh, I've got my second guest, another person I've been uh, had emailed me named Christina. Uh, she wanted to come on here in a second as well. So do you want to hang out here with us first? Let's see Absolutely. if she can make it in. I would love to sit back and let y'all uh, let y'all uh, uh, spit some more gospel to me. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, that's cool, man. And well, again, I first, appreciate you. thank you, all hey. of you. No, you're welcome, and yeah, you're still here with me for now. I just want to see what happens and make sure she can get on. I gave yeah, her the throw link. Yeah, come on. I'll back. I'll, I'll be just sitting right here, man. Cool. I'm just, but we're gonna look at it together because I sent her the link. I'm waiting on it right now. She's on Skype, and uh, she should be able to click that Skype link and jump right in, Christina. So if you can check that up while you're waiting, is there any other subjects that you wanted to kind of leave the audience with uh, before we jump over here with Christina, Angelo? Oh, hold on. Say that one more time. Sorry, I was looking at the chat. No, that's okay. Are there any other subjects uh, on your mind that you might want to cover real quick before Christina comes on? Yeah, I got one more for you. Okay, go ahead. It's I got I got 16 bars for you because you know, I also I, I out of this uh, whole crazy last uh, year and a half that I've had, I got to start my record company. Um it's uh you know, I, I've lived both. I've I've lived both lives. You know, it's like I lived um, street level to to what you just heard. You know, it's like, and um, I've seen it all. You know, it's uh, and I, I have an ability to um to reach people that other people aren't trying to reach. You know, it's like, what what did Christ do? He went to the to the people that society had given up on. That's what I'm here for. You know, Good. and um, and I so I wrote this uh wrote this song called the fall of Babylon, but I only wrote the first verse and I, I'm, I'm going to give it to you right now here and go then, and then go do that. All right. Yo, it's 2017 and they're calling me a criminal for my words in your face and never subliminal and every syllable. So real, it feels personal till it's visible. Holy ghost convict and the grim, but a sin from within met your end. Thus I begin. My truth is unstoppable. Cause every time I rhyme, I spits gospel like the disciples and apostles leaving your lukewarm apostle like Ace of flat line in the hospital. Tried to prove me wrong. It's impossible. I'm old school. Think fossil. Explodes in your lies. Your face is petrified. Your congregation shocked and surprised. Only a fool advertises he's wise. Forgot to analyze the lioness and his pride. Lost every dime and got left like the last time. 
got snatched up by one time on the humble. If this was football, it's called fumble. Your bride ended up with the true king of the jungle who could. <laughs> okay, I'll do it one more time and it'll be flawless. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right, man. Go ahead. I've, I've never moment. done it out loud. I've never done it out loud until now. That's right. okay. Go for it. It's 2017 and they're calling me a criminal for my words in your face and never subliminal in every syllable. So really feels personal till it's visible. Holy Ghost convict and the grim for the sin from within me and us up again. My truth is unstoppable because every time a rhyme spits gospel like the disciples and apostles leaving your lukewarm apostle like Ace of flat line in the hospital. Try to prove me wrong. It's impossible. I'm old school. Think fossil. Exposing your lies, your face is petrified, your congregation shocked and surprised. Only a fool advertises he's wise. Forgot to analyze the lioness in his pride. Lost every dime and got left like the last time. Got snatched up by one time on the humble. If this was football, it's called fumble. Your bride ended up with the true king of the jungle from the tribe of Judah. Who else could it be but Christ Yahshua? And the lioness is whom but the soul mate of the bridegroom who saw he was not in his tomb. Listen, born again from the womb, for he has risen. I've answered my calling and the adversary keeps stalling, but he waited too late because Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen. Wow, that's nice, man. I, I don't have special effects, but if I did, I would crank up the applause to 10 right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, I, I, think, I think it was all right for a second time out loud, but yeah, go get, go get Christine. Thank you. Hey, you're cool, man. What I'm going to do is, yeah, I think now there's a couple of them. There's a couple of people that are trying to jump in, but they seem to be having some technical issues, which isn't unusual around here. But Sandra is one, Christina is the other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it open for the ladies, uh, either one of you, if you're able to jump in. It's open for you right now. You've got the links. Let me see. Yeah, you've got the links. Let me make sure that Christina's got it. And then um, what I'm going to do is just jump over here to the chat again and just go ahead and chat with them for a little bit, if that's cool with you, and yeah. uh, just see what happens with the ladies, if they can come on or not. And I'll probably cut her, cut ourselves out here in just a little while. It's almost 7, and uh, although I do in, really enjoy exposing the wickedness in TV and movies, there are a few TV shows I watch, and one of them happens to be The Walking Dead. All right, everybody. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I can't help it. I do like The Walking Dead. And it's chalk field of uh, social engineering and predictive programming, no doubt. Well, cool. Christina just showed up, it looks like. So uh, let me just say real quick, though, uh, Angelo, thanks again, man. Uh, it was a real pleasure. And I hope that you got to get some things out you wanted to. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. I feel just like Jacob was sounding last week, man. <laughs> oh, man. That's great. No, you're great. No, you know what? I love it. Like I told you. I, that's why I don't ever question the people that come on the way it comes on, the way it works out with emails and all this, because I know it's all working for a good reason. You're a lot of so times even, even I don't understand, but it's going to get to the right people, you know? Well, you know why? Go for Is, it. You know why? Who's in charge? Absolutely. Amen. Who's leading you? That's yep. it, man. Amen. Okay, well, thanks again, Angelo. I'm probably going to – I'll meet you on your side just so I – in case there's any background. But uh, I love you, brother, and we'll talk again Thank soon, you. okay? Absolutely. All right, take care. You can hang out in here if you like, though, please. So, Christina <laughs> – or Juliet. Sorry, it wasn't Christina. It was Juliet. How you doing? And she's got her cam – there you go. You turned your camera off. Good. I tried to warn people earlier – but she wasn't on there long, and you had a small frame there, so don't worry. You should be okay. Um, good. Are you okay. with me? Okay, good. Yeah, I always try to warn people because I know that sucks, you know, when it just most people don't, you know, want to be on camera, and uh, it just kind of pops on. It's like, hello, <laughs> welcome, you know. So how are you? How's things, Juliet? And Christina joined. I'll get with you in a second, too, Christina. Go ahead. I'm doing well. First off, um, I'd just like to – tell um, Angelo that his testimony was very moving and touching and real. And I think in this world, that is exactly what we need. Um, there need not, I mean, we need not forget the verse. We all fall short from the glory of God. And I am the first to admit that I am, have fallen short many times. And all of us need to remember that. Because and Angelo is just a perfect example of that, that there is redemption for anybody through grace in Christ. And he shows it through the love. I mean, it's just love, embrace our brothers and sisters and edify them when we could, because that is actually the commission that we are given here. 
I agree. How about that testimony? And that's why I always try to ask the guests, you know, typically I'll ask them their testimonies because I've never heard a bad one. You know, it's always good news and it usually comes from a really dark place for most people. Yeah. So what's always. on your mind? Uh, how are you and what, what do you got? Uh, what do you got in your mind you'd like to chat about? Please continue. Goodness, I can go any direction. <laughs> um, it depends on what um, people want to hear. I mean, there's lots I've, I'm sure you've written or I've written loads to you, so we can go in that way. Or if you have anything else you need to talk about, like um, I'm also a comic movie nerd person that, you know, can talk about that or, you know, scripture. I can also, you know, add that. It's, it's whatever is open. I'm actually like jack of all trades, master of none, to be honest oh, with you. Oh, that's great. Well, then you'll fit in fine here. Well, uh, here's one thing. I mean, just um, the kind of subjects I cover and other people like myself being a uh, watchman and watch women and watching for the times. Uh, what do you see as far as what time it is? Do you believe we're in that season of the end? And how do you see it playing out in the near future? Do you think Obama's going to have any place to play with all this stuff? Or is he going to come back in somehow? Well, goodness, it surely doesn't help that he's like, what, two blocks away from the White House right now? I mean, like, I mean, that, that's just opinion. I don't know. Has anybody heard about that, that he has like this little compound thing going? Yeah, yeah. He's, uh, he's real close to the White House, and he's building a huge wall around the place as well. Oh, you may want to turn your back or your volume down, if you don't mind, Juliet, because it'll feed back a little bit. That's, yeah, exactly. I've caught on, to, I caught on to that. I'm so new to this. So. No, it's cool. It happens all the time. No worries. But yeah, so that makes me wonder. Um, but I mean, what, if you, what do you think is the most important message that you'd want to get out to people? Like, what do you think the most important subject is obviously accepting Christ, right? But it's, uh, it's getting tougher and tougher out there, it seems like, in the world to convince people of these things. Uh, the entire uh, system is completely rigged against it. And uh, even the Freemasons themselves, a lot of these hidden controllers, the higher level, you know, they accept all religions, but they, they don't want Jesus Christ. This is on the higher level. Yeah. So, so what do you think? How do you see all this? Okay. Um, I feel that it's all pretty much laid out in the playbook itself, which is the Bible. Um, it's kind of, I kind of mentioned that it's easy yet not so easy to detect these things. I mean, I do believe we're in that hour um, there's, if you kind of know the history of the Bible with, um, the generation of the people in the wilderness, you know, there were those first people that were kind of saved and they were complainers, figures, and they never made it to the promised land. I kind of believe that we're kind of in that transition phase where like, you know, the next generation with some of us included or our children or what will definitely probably be the, the ones that. And so we'll have to take a stand so that we do make it to the promised land. And I think that's where we are biblically, as far as what I see. Yeah, no, I'm with you on that. And are you a part of a denomination? Uh, do you go to a church? You know, fortunately, I've, I'm very um, discerning. So it's very odd that um, I grew up, I grew up in the church, and I have actually found a radical, well, not so much radical, but in this sense, one that has an amazing pastor that, pastor that just speaks the truth uncompromised, and but give up the loving aspect of of, I mean, basically, I gave you my testimony, and I can give it to the guests as well, because it is pretty interesting, but um, I ended up in his mother's um, Bible study group as a result. And I mean, you saw, I mean, you heard my testimony of how flawed I was. And for her to embrace me like that and to have people like that. Oh, sorry. You're I think they bring me from a lot of crisis as well. Okay. okay. Yeah. Sorry. <clears throat> You're, uh, we're still having sometimes a little sound issue here and there. It is what it is. It's just been just so buggy, this whole Google thing, but, but, uh, you know, we're getting there. Um, well, did you want to share your testimony with the audience then did you, just so they can get an idea of what you're talking about? I've seen, but uh, do you want to talk to them about it or? Sure. Sure. I can definitely go there. Um, cool. first off, okay. Um, first off, I'll just say that um, one big agenda and I can see is there's like this, there is revelation in the method, but you kind of have to think of why. And the very why is it's very important that it's easy to get sucked up into it. And then you kind of don't do the things you're supposed to. You can get distracted or hung up on it, or it can even be a downer for you. So it's very important 
not to let that happen because that is kind of the tool of the enemy to get you to that point to where maybe you don't even open your Bible and draw from the water that you need to to get spiritually, you know, ready for the battle because it is a spiritual battle. And it's easy in this world to forget that, you know, but you kind of have to keep things up. I mean, he does say in the Bible, I, I was trying to find a scripture before I came on um, that, you know, look on the good things, dwell on the good things, look up, you know, and it doesn't mean have your head in the clouds nor in the sand. It just means, yes, be aware of the hour we're in, but at the same time, don't let the enemy make you think that you're in this like apocalyptic, disastrous world because all these symbols that we're being flooded with you kind of see it over and over again, and it's kind of hard to register them and not automatically think that we're surrounded. And yes, we are, yeah. but yet we're not. No, that's a great point. Uh, it's, you know, a lot of, it's a bad term, but a lot of people use doom tard, you know, you've heard before, but uh, yeah. there are people that are just addicted to the doom of it, you know, and the reality is that just like, you know, those of us that know that have read this, uh, the worst parts of Revelation and everything, uh, this is not something anybody should be hoping for. Uh, this is not going to be fun. It's not going to be cool. You know, you're not going to be able to sit on your balcony and eat some popcorn and watch the locusts come out and, you know, and uh, bite at people and sting people. It's it's not going to be a cool thing. So, you know, it's it's great to cover this. I can't help but do it. Uh, you know, the right. lot of the things I do and to warn people and at least get them ready. And by yes. that, of course, we mean, you know, accepting Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And by extension of that, just being able to have that real relationship with your Heavenly Father, be spirit-filled, and that's the key. And, um, you know, I used to not talk about this stuff as much. Over the years, I've evolved more into it because I've realized the importance of it. I know, uh, I feel God gave me my own gifts to do the things I do and see some things here and there and at least ask some questions. But as time goes on, there's a responsibility with it. And so I personally have been trying more and more to express faith. I do it a lot here on the shows more than I do videos because, you know, that's really what it's all about. I've said it before. That's what's at the end of the rabbit hole. You can go down the rabbit hole. Mm -hmm take so many little side portals but at the very end of it it's uh, what is your relationship with god are you following the ways of christ uh you know have you been turned upside down as my friend jonathan says but you know mm -hmm. that's that's the thing you know that's really all that matters and then uh even as uh even as, um, gosh, I just forgot uh, Angelo. I forgot his first, I was going to call him Armando. I'm sorry, Angelo. But even as Angelo was saying earlier, you know, that, um, uh, that, that, that that's it. That's all that matters. You know, we need that protection. We need that, that connection uh, because it's great to look at this stuff, to see the horrors of the world. To me, it is. It's, it's good to expose these things. But even in my own comment sections, so often I see people that are just really addicted to it. They love it. You know, they, they seem to, or they're living in just massive amounts of fear. You know, and a lot of them are like saying, that's right, KJ, come on, Jesus, let's burn this earth and whatever. It's like, no, man, like I'm not feeling that way either. It has yeah. to come. I don't like most of these things here. Most of us don't feel like we fit in. Um, yeah, but at the same time, I'm not hoping for destruction. I hope we can get as many, many fish as we can on board before it all happens, you know. Right. That's exactly what we need to do. And I do think you do need to cover what you cover. I don't understand people that, plus it's interesting too. I mean, come on, let's be real as well. I mean, you know. I agree. <laughs> hey, who doesn't like a flying humanoid video every now and then, folks? Come on. Okay. Exactly. I mean, lighten up. It's like, come on. We got creativity from our creative for a reason. So. So please, so please continue. Don't let me cut you off. It just, uh, or actually Google, I I guess. I'll give you my testimony. That's like what it's about. Okay, go ahead. And I just, be, I don't know what's, uh, if there's something on your side you can see, but you keep uh, fading out on our end over here. So I don't know if you're close to the microphone or something or whatever, but go ahead. And don't feel bad. This happens all the time. It's, you know, there's always some kind of weird technical thing. So, but go um, ahead. Okay, I'm wondering if it's my microphone. Okay, well, we'll see. Am I there now? Yep, now you're clear. Go for it. Okay. So my testimony is this. Much like KJ, and I just never understood. I would go on auditions and I would classes, and it just always kept being like a thing that was always set in my path. And I just couldn't. 
um, you know, the teachers, I went to Strasbourg Institute for a while, um, a little bit after college and before, and they would say, yeah, it's great. And things would happen, but like I would get a commercial or something and then like our car would break down and I wouldn't make it. And I always felt like, um, I think I even told you, like, I'm a, like, Floyeri and Omideas, where he's, like, so bitter that, you know, God, why'd you give me this, you know, passion, and now I can't do it. And it wasn't until later, because obviously, you know, now I know what I know. I just wish I knew it then. Um, there was a very big reason why um, I wasn't, those little, you know, hangups and those roadblocks were put in my path. And I just truly believe that that industry would have eaten me up alive and I probably wouldn't even be here. I mean, I probably would have been maybe saved because I grew up a believer always, but um, it was, I had to go through so many refining things. And that's one thing I liked about what Jacob said is that there are going to be trials. I mean, there's, that's no lie. You're going to go through trials as a Christian, but, um, and you get stronger and it's, he's with you the whole time. And so that's, that's one thing that I wanted to stress. No, so, that's a good, that's um, a good point. And it's interesting that you were on your path there. And like I told you, I was there too, but I was working in different areas, but it all fell apart at the end after I woke up. That's really what changed things. I was still a believer, still had Christ and everything, but I just didn't know what I know now. And when I learned it out there and I made the scariest movie ever made when I was living out there, I just didn't even want to be a part of it anymore. I didn't care to make scripts anymore. And tried. And it's not to say that God didn't have people out there doing that, but just I wasn't the one. You know, I needed to go do something else. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm thankful that he does that and puts those road, roadblocks in our way from time to time because you're right. You know, that's a city of, of uh, filled with people with broken dreams, you know, and, mm -hmm. and uh, it's, it eats people alive all the time. So please continue. Okay, so um, I basically got the message, um, reluctantly still at that point, because I hadn't had, you know, woken up, so to speak, until later, and it, this came quite heavily and big. Um, so anyways, I, you know, went to school, and I just, I married the person that I had a crush on since I started. And he was but, okay, keep, keep going. Uh, I'm just letting you know that right somehow. there. I was just going to tell you, just so you know, like right when you said I married the man I had a crush on, and then it just like went weird again. So I don't know if something happened on your end. I don't think it is. I was just checking, just okay. so you know. But otherwise, it's coming in a lot better now. So, you know, it's really weird is I always, it's my, you know, you're, we're all a little paranoid, but sometimes I wonder if there's literally somebody over there with like a volume knob or just screwing around with the shows. And I'm, it's just my <laughs> imagination, I'm sure. Get a little cuckoo here, but still, it, it's happening from time to time with everybody here. So please continue, though. It's good. So you married the man that uh, your childhood crush, the first big crush, which is a good move. Uh, I know that's not easy, yeah. but I'm glad you're, you've done it. So go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, we've been through um, but I never, so I as well for where it gets funky because this is in 2007, as I told you, and I know you worked in Big Brother, and I don't know what um, season you were in. Do you remember, perchance? Or? Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, I'm pretty sure it was nine and 10. Um, one of the seasons was the one where you had guinea pigs in the house with the guests because I wound up adopting those guinea pigs for myself. It was uh, <laughs> Pancake and Lucy, and this is before I was awake, so, you know, and it wasn't Lucy for Lucifer. It just, she looked like a little Lucy, I guess, to me. But, uh, but yeah, Pancake and Lucy were their names, and I got to take them after the show was done because they'd been in the house for three months with the contestants and then you know nobody wanted them so but yeah but go ahead okay well guinea pigs are so smart my used to actually scratch at the refrigerator for food but anyway that was a nice. yeah, <laughs> so I love the food, guys <laughs> they're little nerds they just went to this place where she, this girl, I mean, I think her name was Jamika, she was praying, and I think it was when, a time when I think someone named, like, Evil Dick and his mom's daughter That was my, that was my like season. That. Yeah, it was him and his daughter. Oh, crazy. Your Alice in Wonderland season. Surprise, surprise. Abs exactly. Yeah, and that's interesting. Evil Dick was a really interesting character, because we, uh, you know, knew him outside of the show, after the show and stuff, and, uh, uh, man, and he... I mean, just what you would think. Like, he was hard partying. His first trip was straight to Vegas right after the show to go gamble and party and stuff. So it's like he was a real wild man. Uh, anyway, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Well, he had I, – I don't know if it was 
people that followed him directly that, that trolled me. Be I was just defending a ring in the house. And um, and then CBS made sure to take care of that because also later on they had someone else praying and but they made her completely like so I noted my husband they're like showing to discredit it to discredit the prayer of praying in the spirit and just I'll leave it at that but because um, it was just some other girl that was totally doing like what everybody would think it is which is kind of definitely not what it you know is supposed to be but. Jamaica was, I think she was pure in, in what she was doing. And so anyways, a lot of the technologies that ha we have now um, weren't really public back then in 2007. So a lot of things happened to me as a result um, of it, like very bizarre things. And like I said, I was in LA. I, um, you know, my husband and I would go to the theater frequently. And like, it was almost like, you know, those, I don't know, they talk about when they talk about TIs, you know, those like, staged little happenings that happen where people will say little buzzwords that just get your attention and it like something weird and I, it, I would just send me like into this little tailspin now again I was compromised because I did go to Vegas a lot with my husband and that was my vice and that is where I got the the grip but, you know a lot of people get addicted to drugs or whatever but mine was gambling unfortunately um we got oh, wow big, really yeah yeah it, it just yeah it's in my family and I just it was really bad and I just we just kept going and going and going and we get we just have money like crazy and um, we just stay at like the best hotels we it, 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 we lived a great quote unquote great life it was empty it was pointless it was you know it wasn't you know I, I can see why those people that have it all get disillusioned very quickly because it doesn't fill you it's just empty nonsense and you know I still had you know my Bible and God but again I was compromised I was at that point maybe a hypocrite possibly um, because then you go into you take pharmaceuticals well not pharmaceuticals actually just drugs just like smoke weed and then you know I would you know do trips of like um, mushrooms and um, whatever just to I don't know I Comfortably Numb was like my favorite song by Pink Floyd. I mean, what the heck? I don't know what the heck was my issue at that point. I think I was just, you know, it was just a really bizarre time. And, you know, we all kind of become Pinocchio at some point in our life and we just go down and follow Honest John and, you know, we lose our way, even if we're born in, quote unquote, the church. And maybe I was the prodigal and, and you know, I needed to have, I mean, my mom, like probably she didn't know it at the time, but when she learned about all the stuff I had done after she, I mean, she just says it was only grace and faith that, you know. No, I, I am with you. She just knew that. Yeah, no, I'm with <laughs> yeah, you. So. I'm, I, it's, you know, it's um, some of the strongest believers I know have had the toughest roads. You know what I mean? And it's, we, it, again, it comes from. Um, a place of hurt, you know, a place of loss. It's like when we go out and do everything we want to in the world, no matter what, and we still uh, come out unfulfilled, you know, we start filling that void with everything but God, then, mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, so luckily a lot of us hit that breaking point at one point, we turn ourselves around, you know. Yeah, and I was on my way to doing that. Um, but I was still a little bit compromised. I didn't give up the weed. Um, so, because I had anxiety at that point and I but for some reason you know um, like they would just say well pray about you know gambling and as much like Angelo was saying and it, it's a true testimony of it it's like you can say you want to do it but my heart wasn't like ready to do it it's like for some reason my heart's still like no but I want you know that those little machines it's like that Twilight Zone Franklin where they're like I don't know if you've ever seen that one <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it you know when it comes and you just one day it just stopped. God just said, no, I just knew I was sitting there at a machine and I just thought, you know, Shalou, you're a believer, you know, and here you are and you just need to, this isn't going to work for you. You're not going to get anywhere with this. In fact, the enemy is going to keep his gripping you if you keep on this way and you're going to lose everything you have and what you've built with your husband. And is that what you want? And I'm, I'm like, okay, wait a minute. You're, you know, I'm, I get those, because I did, I would pray really deeply with the Lord. And when I would feel what, you know, he was saying, 
you just know when it's like he's like ready to like okay this is your last chance and I was like oh yeah you're not messing around this time okay and it just went away and I never went back I never wanted to go I don't want to go to Vegas anymore I don't want to gamble and this was years ago I mean that I left that alone and you know that was that was gone good yeah, yeah, and you know he's doing that in many ways now. But um, anyways, yeah. But then the targeting happened later on, um, and I was still like again like compromised at that point. And which is why I think it's very important that there is spiritual warfare, that people understand the armor of God, and people need to really look into it. I won't teach <laughs> about it, I guess, but just look it up somewhere if you can because you it's essential to being in this world because without it you're like you're like a little walking target with I mean, you need your armor if it is a spiritual battle i mean just look at the jargon used battle we don't battle against you know flesh and blood but against principalities of spirit in the air and that you know yeah that's well that's why i've said before you know i've said it before and i'll say it again but that you know, we all of us are avatars, really. And if you're not spirit-filled, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, then you are uh, you're you're wide open for all these influences around us, right? And you can be used as a quote avatar or a puppet by wicked forces, you know. So, uh, and I look through that lens with everybody I meet. It doesn't mean that I, you know, don't like someone that's not a Christian or whatever. You know, I I just approach uh, some of those people differently. You know, that's it. You know, uh, because uh, you just never know how people can be used in your lives to come at you, and they may not even realize it. Right, I, know that, right. I know that sounds paranoid to some people, but I mean, it's, that's just the truth. That's the way I see it, you know? Go ahead. Yeah, it's true, because in a way, they're like a, em, not an empty vessel, like they have no meaning or so no soul, but if you're kind of walking around without the Holy Spirit, then, you know, you're kind of accessible to any spirit at that point. You know, and that's really important to understand as well. Um, so again, I don't think I didn't have the Holy Spirit, but I definitely wasn't commissioned to do what I was doing by speaking up, uh, up for online in a forum uh, for, you know, anybody who was, you know, faith. So obviously that God didn't want me there or else I would have been more protected, which I wasn't. So basically I walked into a spiritual battle that I wasn't prepared to have. And that was really one that was going to just wanted to chew me up and spit me out. So this is where it will get, you know, a little bit more wooey for people, which is the sense that um, just strange things started happening. Things through my computer, um, like images would come and out of nowhere and they would be just very scary and very like freaky and it's like well who's doing that and then like people would come on knowing some information about me but it would be you know really detailed like almost just like there was spirits inside of the computer like that would know things that not just like things that you can look up through you know data files or whatever the heck it's like they like rummage through my stuff and like new stuff and or you know and just drop little hints like that to like increase that whole paranoia um, I was always honest about the things that I took and experimented with um, through that time in my life. And um, I finally just like cracked because I just basically got a direct threat online. Um, someone like threatened me like with a shotgun and I was like within target and like things started being sent. I started getting like flooded with trolls. Like I don't know how they mass flood you, but they just kept like messages just kept popping up all over my screen and um, with threats and hate. Um, and I, again, I was naive. I didn't really know much about that. And so uh, I collapsed at that point and called my husband and I, what's up? Um, I need you here. Come. And then I, you know, um, I somehow it was, um, I had like a psychotic, they would say episode, which is not so true. And this is where I, I guess if you knew where I lived in my hometown, you kind of know there's a lot of um, occult things in that town. And so, you know, it could have come out many number of ways. But anyways, they found meth in my system as a result. And I'm in the ER. And um, the doctor comes and he's like really rude. And he's just like, so well, well, now we know what's wrong with you. You know, you've been taking meth. You're just like junkie or whatever. And I, I mean... I had like, I don't know how many things to tranquilize me and my mother and my husband were there. And I just, my eyes just turned up and I said, no, I didn't. I didn't take that. That's not true. You know, and you know, my mom knows me pretty well. And I, I mean, I'm really close to her. So she knew that that was definitely not a lie. And my husband knows me enough 
that that wasn't a lie either. But by that time, I was in the system's hands. So I was um, put into a um, facility on the, like, you know, that Kanye hold that, you know, people are talking about the 72 oh, hour yeah. hold. Yeah. And like this kind of stuff happened um, again because I was speaking of things that, like, if I were to say it now, it'd be more plausible, but this is 2007, and, like, oh, yeah, like, the, like I would tell the people, like, well, things, images were coming through my computer, and they'd look at me like I'm crazy, like, how could people get access to just pop things up in your computer? And I'd be like, well, I don't know how, but they did. I don't know. They're like, well, it's easy to hallucinate that, and it, it was just such, like, a sci-fi horror movie. It was the scariest movie ever. <laughs> I was going to ask you because you may have uh, the the mic's doing pretty good. Occasionally, it still tweaks out a little, but and again, I don't know if it's your side. It's probably the Google stuff happening over here. But um, hold on one second. I'm sorry. I just want to check something on my side here too. Okay. You mind saying something real quick? Oh no no uh, hi. Okay I good. Was... All right, that's cool. Yeah, you're sounding good now. Like I said, sorry, most of it's all been pretty good. The one part I, th I may have missed, though, is how did the meth get into your system? Did, I mean, I know you didn't do it, but what was the reasoning there? Go ahead. Okay, this was the definite reasoning. And I have, there's a question, is what did Kanye West as a clone have to do with Jesus? Pray for his health instead of gossiping, number one. I'm not gossiping because I do pray for his health, even though he went I'm actually co-sympathizing with him, and I'm saying I went on a Kanye West hold because that's what they do. He just stops one. I was doing, I was hitting a nurse somewhere online. They didn't like it, so they put you in a situation where you crumble. And so I, if I went through the same thing that this man did, no matter who he is, celebrity or not, it would be unchristian of me not to sympathize for him um, or it just doesn't make sense. So I'm saying basically that is what happened to him and I feel bad for him and knowing that, knowing what I went through, anytime something like that happens, the first thing I do is get on my knees and pray for that person because it's not a nice place to be and people talk about these, you know, FEMA camps and whatnot and it's not until you're there and it's happening to you that you know if you have strength, like you, your faith is either going to be there or it isn't. You kind of know where you stand with God at that point. And that's a very, that's a big blessing, I think, in my life now. And that's where I'm saying like these struggles and this persecution, God is with you. I could have looked at it as, oh my God, they did this to me, they did that to me. Yeah, they did. But I also was refined because I saw God in that place and he was with me and he stood with me and scriptures that I learned as a child came back to me and I was able to pray and all of these things happened. So he held my hand the whole time. It's like, yes, I was naughty and I went into this battle without being, you know, clothed, but he still in, in his infinite grace, he just covered me anyway. And that is the biggest, I mean, if I have to say anything, nothing else, that's just the one thing I would want to say or to have somebody that's listening here that's no matter where you are, no matter what you've done, even if you don't believe now, you could have had hate before for him. Just it just to give him a chance to show you what an amazing cre creator we have. He's just he just wants to I, I just can't express it's almost like his arms are just extended for those that are hurt and lost. No, that's and, beautiful. So, and it's true. It's like when that happens to you, the only thing you want to do is just let everybody in on it. It's like, come on, people, you need some of this because, you know, it's it's like Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. You know, I'm not. And it's you just have to because I just see so many hurt people and I just wish they could have that. And um, I do get, you know, quite sad when I see a lot of um, bickering on YouTube, a lot of the infighting and a lot of the other things that happen with, you know, things because all of those, you know, divisions and divisiveness, that's not what, I mean, ultimately when push comes to shove, I'm thinking he's going to say, I think he even gives a scripture um, about, you know, don't go into petty arguments about things, like keep your focus on him. It's about glorifying him. And when you take your ego out of it, and that's another thing. My ego was in it when I was doing it um, in 2007. It was all about me. I was like, oh, I know scripture. I can write this, and I can talk you down. Woohoo! You know, I, I, it wasn't about glorifying God. It, it kind of was, but I let my ego take over, and I'm fully able to admit that. So that you was know. pretty much your transforming uh, uh, moment, though, I guess, going through all that is what kind of really turned you over to him for the most part, would you say? 
to completely be all in, yes. To like just be all in. Not to say I haven't had struggles, you know, since then. I mean, it's hard. Then you wake up and then you're like, oh, goodness, what's this all about? You know? Yeah, yeah. It really it takes you to a whole new level when you wake up because, you know, that's, <clears throat> that's that difference between, um, in some cases, people who are just a part of the church system only and don't do their own research and just listen to that. And then those people who like, you know, read the Bible for themselves and research for themselves and then start to actually see the mysteries unfold, you know, all the knowledge being expounded right now and all the, the eyes being opened because that really is the next level of it. You know, this is, these are the mysteries that have been shared forever in secret, you know, and now God's letting them out for everyone to see. So yeah, you know, we want both sides of this. We want to be a full, you know, as, as, as a filled Christian, so to speak, as we can be, you know, and, and really have our eyes open. And uh, even with that, you know, the struggle of, of not letting it consume you, you know, not letting the darkness and scary stuff consume you. That's very true. And that's a balance that you definitely have to find. And um, yeah, and it's very easy in the beginning when you wake up to absorb all you can and take, I mean, I think I've read everything, you know, like I know everything, like people say, well, do you like Patch, you know, Anthony Patch? Yes, I actually listen to him all the time because I really like what he has to say. Yeah, but you have to kind of filter and like kind of weed out like who it is that's, um, you know, that is really going to be genuine and actually is giving you something that can fill your spirit or help you learn or help you grow. But it's always important to go to scripture yourself. To, yeah, no, it, it's, it's true because there's people, some of the best um, revealers of the knowledge and mysteries and all that over the years are people who aren't even Christian and don't even believe in Jesus. They think he's a myth. And uh, Jordan Maxwell is a good example. And the, again, it's why we eat the meat, we throw away the bones. You know, um, it's okay to understand that the pure stuff, the good stuff, the real knowledge is coming through these people <clears throat> from a good place, you know. Uh, but then it's all, unfortunately, the. Uh, other large percentage of deception we have to be able to decipher and that takes our the holy spirit you know also takes your logic your reason your critical thinking to see through all this and and uh you know determine what's good you know and what's not um here's what i'm going to do because i'm looking down at my time we've gone two hours tonight so far i want to go and get christina on in a moment and i don't just want to shove you out the door but juliet is there anything else you wanted to discuss before we go tonight let's see well there's there's some so just nowadays, KJ, you know what, um, that's actually, I'll answer that. Be, I mean, not that I know, but because I'm actually, I, re, I have two daughters and I'm raising them and it's very, when you have two daughters, it's like all times and, you know, I'm homeschooling them, to be honest with you, because you just like look. Oh, I'm really sorry, Juliet. I do. I want to. You got right to the point, and I want to hear it. You were saying this is how you're raising your two daughters, and then it totally cut out again. So I'm sorry to have, oh, okay. to have you start over, but please do. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Thanks for okay. bearing with um, this. I'm sorry. No, it's not mine. But okay. Um, no, just that. Um, we're in that system where you it, they are their rate. I mean, it's that it goes along with that whole like kind of mixing and melding and hermaphroditic thing that's. You know, men are being feminized, women are being, you know, um, masculine, and it just does it, it goes against the whole dynamic of the Bible. And that's why I don't take any offense about women shouldn't be preaching because that is in the Bible, and, and I do follow it. You know, it's, I, you know, and I'm not a preacher, obviously, I'm just a believer, and I just like sharing, you know, scripture. I think, um, I'm like the last person that would, I want to pray for people because there is gift in prayer and in, you know, helping people with your testimony. But as far as preaching, I mean, I'll leave that to the, the big people <laughs> or who got appoints and anoints. But anyways, yes. women are vicious. I mean, look at Kris Jenner. That's all I got to say. That's been the agenda from day one. Um, girls are taught, even Common Core, it's, there's something in the system right now that they're teaching algebra to first graders. My daughters were in first grade, and I saw algebraic things. And they're skipping a part of the brain that you kind of need a pathway before you even develop thought for that algebraic, you know, process. No, I know. You need to I mean, be a certain age. Yeah, and that Common Core is obviously a major dumbing down. I mean, that's just, it is the worst. But And it's amazing that it's actually out there. I mean, that's one of Obama's legacies that we never hear about. <clears throat> but Common Core came from him and or his administration, and it's it's in schools, and it's just, 
it's amazing. It's totally dumbing down the kids even worse than they already are. So how do you raise two daughters in the beast system? How do I? Well, um, I'm homeschooling, and that's because I'm blessed to be able to do so. Anybody that can't do that, because obviously that's not the case with everybody. Um, but there are, you know, also ways I have such respect for any single mother in this world because I can barely handle it being co-parenting with my husband. Um, so all single mothers or single parents have like my utmost respect and always do. And extra prayers need to go out for them too, because they're up against double, I think. Yeah, I agree. Well, well, you know what? I think, uh, I, I guess I'm going to jump over here now to Christina and I hope uh, you I hope you feel like you had some time because it's been nice chatting with you. Uh, time's just going by quick and I want to get on, get Christina on for a little bit. Then I'll talk with the chat room a bit and, and say good night. But uh, it has been a pleasure talking to you, and I'll have to have you on again sometime because it sounds like there's a lot of other subjects you and I can get into as well. Yeah, I can get into the asylum. No, I'm kidding. I can't know, but yeah. there are stories about that because that system is way broken. There's people in there that shouldn't be, and that's very important to talk about. Anyway, thank you, KJ. Juliet, you're awesome. Thank you, and take care. I'll talk to you soon, okay? Okay, thanks. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. So, Christina, I don't know if you're able to unmute yourself over there, but let's jump in. I know you uh, had something you wanted to talk about for a bit. How you been? It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. Can you hear me all right? Absolutely. How's things? Uh, oh, wow. It's been a trip. <laughs> it's uh -huh. been a complete spiritual journey that I've been going on, a lot of spiritual warfare. Uh, so tell just, us about it. You're in the right place. Yeah. Uh, well, let me just first start with saying that I have been sick lately, and so I'm kind of a little bit lower on my energy level. And so I just want to pray that the Lord helps me kind of say the right things and not over speak because I do talk a lot. So <laughs> that's all right. Cool. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Well, um, I need to be really cautious about what I do talk about because I am getting ready to go into a major, major court battle over my son. I'm sorry to hear that. Good luck. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Um, it's been a long time I've been fighting for him and I can't go into a lot of details, but I want to talk about what, uh, what's been happening this last two months. So I've been struggling a lot with depression and a lot of uh, just, it's just been a, a war going on inside of me. Um, a lot of things that I just didn't want to feel and I wasn't even sure what it was feeling, but it, it came out in the form of depression. I have um, PTSD from my time in the military, but also I'm sure from years of, of trauma as a kid and throughout my life, we've all had traumatic periods of time, I guess, uh, some more than others. <laughs> but um, back in December, I, uh, I finally just, I prayed out to God. And I said, God, I don't want to feel this way anymore. I don't want to feel depressed. You know, I, um, I've been trying my best to serve him, but it just felt like something is, you know, like, I, I didn't know if it's, it's, you know, it felt like demonic oppression. Like something is still giving this uh, negative entity permission to be in my life. And I just was asking God, please help me because I can't do it by myself. And, um, so it was what started all of this and he answered my prayer pretty quickly. And it's been a step-by-step -step progress. Um, I went to the Christian bookstore and I said, all right, I'm going to get a piece of art to put over my my fireplace, something that's going to remind me of God is going to be a positive message, you know? Um, sorry if my voice is like terrible right no, now. I, 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 it's okay, it sounds great, and uh, I'm sorry you're sick, but we, I'm loving it. I always like talking to you anyway, so go ahead. All right, well, thank you. So I went through this whole, this whole bookstore, and I was looking at all of them, and one of the last ones I came across was a big picture of a, of a tree and it had like, it was like a, it looked like duality to me. And I was like, Ooh, what's this? You know, I don't, I don't like that already. Cause it's got like this black and white side, but I don't know what that, you know, I was like, I don't know what's that. What's the scripture on the bottom of it. And it said beauty for ashes, Isaiah 61, three. Now the picture after I read the scripture, started to make a lot more sense because one side of the tree looks like it's full of life and the other side of the tree looks like it's on fire. 
So that started to, you know, I was like, okay, well, what's, what's Isaiah 61, three say? I'm going to read it to you if that's all right. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. It says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty, beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. When I read that, uh, I felt like that tingle, you know, where the Holy Spirit just kind of yeah. hits you. And I was like, ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. so, let me get a drink real quick. Let me get a drink. Okay. So I bought that, that painting and I hung it above my, my mantle and I started pr meditating on it as I walked by it every day. And I realized that God, God was not doing these things to me, you know, my struggles, but that he was allowing it to happen to me so that in the ashes and why, when I brought low and I reach out to him that much higher, can he bring you to him? And there's beauty in that. And, you know, I was not, I was not raised in a church and some, some people who are raised in churches, they grow up and they have this self-righteousness about them because they've always gone to church. They've never done drugs. They've never, you know, slept around or whatever. And so it's all about, oh yeah, we're totally great Christians because we've done all these great things our whole lives. Yeah, I mean, meanwhile, but, a lot of times it's pride is their biggest sin and things like that. For sure. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a lot less visible than other people's sin. You know, it's easy to judge people who have had a baby outside of wedlock when they were a teenager than it is to, you know, see. It's much easier to see that than it is to see what's in someone's heart. Yes, yeah, true. And, um, you know, the very people who have been persecuting me and, and putting me through, just putting me through hell are people from church. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's, that's so unfortunate, man. I, I'm with you and you know me, you know the channel. I mean, I've seen yeah. the worst sides of, and then I've seen the beautiful sides. I've seen people who go to church mm -hmm. who are beautiful, wonderful uh, people. It's just a mix. And I do think a large percentage of the so-called really hateful are really uh, the so-called Christians on YouTube that come off really hateful and nasty. I don't even think they're really Christians. I'm pretty sure they're just using that as a cover to be jerks, you know, but, but yeah. still, unfortunately you're right. And a lot of organized religion, there is uh, are a lot of those people who are like that a little higher than higher than you, uh, you know, holier than thou, And mm -hmm. uh, it's a drag, but go ahead. Yeah. Um, that just reminded me, I want to get off on a little bit of a tangent about something that Angelo, I think it was Angelo, Yes. Was, was saying earlier, I uh, was talking, or maybe it was you, you were talking about how people say, God said this to me. God said this to me. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and really, you know, when, when you're Christians, the spirit inside of you, the Holy spirit, you hear God speaking to you because you've got the Holy spirit inside of you. But people who say, God says this to me, what they really ought to be saying is the spirit inside of me says this. Yeah, I'm really shy about even saying that. I mean, as much as I love my father, as much as I look at him like my father, I'm also I still fear him. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I don't ever yeah. want to think that I'm getting too high and mighty and proud and thinking I can just you know that. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's oh, that's exactly. Why. Yeah, I yeah. know. I know. I feel I'm guided by the Holy Spirit. I know I am with subjects and people I have on the show and everything else. You know, but I I don't even like espousing that a whole lot. You know, and yeah, I just feel weird about it. But yeah. Go ahead. I, I, I totally hear you. It's it, it just, you know, if you kind of think of it in that context, then it leaves you open to, to see, okay, well, what, what spirit is inside of you? You know, when someone says that to you, says, God told me this, it's like, okay, what, what did the spirit that's inside of them, you know, what, what spirit is in them, you know, look at their fruits and then, you know, whether you should take what they say with the grain of salt or not, you know? <laughs> yep, you're right. It's always the fruits. They speak volumes. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I'd been meditating on that. And, um, in the meantime, you know, for the last several months I had not gone to church or anything like that. And, and that's good. That's good. Some, you know, for me, I like having the fellowship. I like going to church, but sometimes like I need to have that alone time with God and not have other people kind of coming in and, and, and it's just like all these outside voices when I'm really trying to just listen to the voice of God. 
you know? Um, I so I started thinking about I, this one church really close to my house that seen a million times started to be on my mind. And I was like, okay, um, it's an apostolic church. I'm not apostolic. I'm not Pentecostal. Uh, <laughs> So I was like, okay, why, why does this church keep coming to mind? And so, you know, when I'm one of those people, I just, you know, go with the flow. So I was like, all right, well, I'll go check it out and see what it's about. Now, when I, when I previously, you know, lately when I've been going to church, I go to this Messianic Jewish church. And although I'm not legalistic about it, anybody can do what they feel is on their heart. When I'm at church or when I'm praying, I feel like I should cover my head out of respect. You know, a sense of um, re humility. reverence. Yeah, humility and reverence to God. It's not about my glory, it's about His. So I cover my glory to give it all to Him. And um, so I went to this apostolic church wearing my head covering, and it was like going back in time. It was crazy. <laughs> it was, it, it was, I, I was honestly wondering when they were going to bring the snakes out because it was like, Deep, it seemed like a deep south church, very old fashioned. The ladies had like the buns right on the top of their head and long skirts and stuff. And I was like, all right, all right, okay. So I sat down and the, the, the preacher got up and he started ranting and raving about Jews. No way, really? <laughs> yeah, he did. I'm sorry if I, I'm coughing in your ear. But no, I've you're been okay. Sick. You're fine. So, so he started ranting and raving about Jews and I'm sitting there like, why is he ranting and raving about Jews? And I'm sitting here like I go to a Jewish church and um, all right, I'm just going to be here and finish the service, but I'm not going to come back here. <laughs> so, yeah, um, you know, uh, so anyway, service was over. I don't need to go into a whole lot of detail because it's not important. Um, I left and I said, I'm not going back there. And then like, the, it just kept coming back in my mind. And every time I thought about that church, I just started praying for him because, you know, it's one of those churches that we all know about that they're really closed minded. They're the right ones and everybody else is not. So, yeah. But, yeah. I'm going to get another little drink. <laughs> okay. That's all right. No problem. Thanks again. I'll, I'll shout out to the chat guys. Thanks for, uh, for chilling with us tonight. Thanks for, uh, being patient through all of the little technical difficulties we're having here and there. Uh, this has been the most I've seen in quite a while on the show, but looks like we're running pretty smooth right now. So just thanks again for being here. Hope you're learning something. I hope you're enjoying it. Hope you're enjoying the chat. And uh, just thanks again, guys. Okay. So go ahead, Christina. Oh, the chat is great. I love you guys so much. You guys are awesome. Yeah, they're um, great. <laughs> So I planned, uh, it was about two weeks went by and I was like, okay, okay, God, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to go back to that church? Do you want me to change their minds? What do you want me to do? Go let me tell them I'm Jewish. Uh, <laughs> you know, that will be interesting. And um, I felt like that little voice inside of me, whatever you want to call it, you want to say God talk to me or it's just the little voice, but it said, no, just go there and worship me with them don't have an agenda, just go there for me. And I was like, okay, all right, I could do that. And it was like, you never know where God's going to show up. So I was like, all right, I'll go there on Wednesday night. Well, Sunday night came around and this was the weekend where they had that um, travel ban. It just, you know, Trump had made that executive order uh, travel ban. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I heard about it. Yeah. And um, as I was going to bed Sunday night, I was like, scrolling through Facebook and I saw um, a video of Muslims in the airport. I guess they were detained. I don't know. And they were praying. And um, the comments on the video was just disgusting. It was totally disgusting. Like, I mean, you know, they would say, God bless America. And in the same breath, you know, kill all the Muslims. And I was like, what? it just hurt me, like, just to read that. Um, you know, I was in the military. I went to Iraq. And um, it's hard for me to admit this, but I've been programmed to not like, you know, certain people. And 
um, it's something that as a Christian I really struggle with. Well, the military programmed you before you went, right? So you wouldn't be afraid to shoot them, I'm guessing. Right, right. You know, and then with everything that's going on in the media, it's hard to um, to become, you know, to deprogram from that, you know? But yeah, it's funny that it's not funny, but now the new uh, that 24 TV series just started back again, 24 Legacy. <clears throat> and the whole idea is about uh, a little Muslim high school girl about to uh, blow up the school and... And then some other Muslim terrorists in America about to blow a bunch of stuff up. So the programming's still there. Um, they really love that Islamophobia because it covers up so many of their own dirty deeds. You know, a lot of these people. And mm -hmm. uh, when I worked in LA, I worked around a lot of people that were Muslim, and they were really great people. You know, they were just like a lot of Christians I know. You know, that they're just following what they believe, and uh, you know, they didn't hate people. They didn't want to kill anybody. They were just doing their thing. You know, so go ahead. Yeah. Well. That, that Sunday night when I, you know, when you're scrolling through Facebook, if you don't click on the video, you just see it moving. And um, so for when I first saw it, all I saw was people praying and people responding by throwing, you know, basically stones at them um, while they're praying. And, you know, as much as I didn't want to admit it, it, it actually shined a light in my own heart that wow, you know, I still have some, some hatred that I didn't know was there. You know, it's one thing to be angry when you see something bad happen in the world, but it's a, there's a really fine line between anger and, and hatred. And um, it kept me up all night and uh, I couldn't sleep. I, I tried to go to bed and I, I just, I couldn't stop thinking about, about the, the people in the video praying and they were practicing their faith. And, you know, how I, how would I feel if I was praying in, you know, in public because I'm detained and I have no option but to do so to practice my faith. And then these people are calling to kill me because I'm doing so to me. Yep, that's horrible. Right. To me, in that instance, I, I saw God, I saw Jesus more in the Muslims who didn't believe in him than the Christians in the chat who say that they do. Oh, yeah, man, that's true. It's just that, again, that community is just, it's, you know, that's why I always say I don't like to even call myself a Christian. I've been that way for a long time. And that's that's because of my, the way I see it, it's a little twisted, maybe it's because my real love of Christ, my real love of trying to follow his ways, my real love of God. And there's, again, so many, quote, Christians that just really give us all a bad name. And the other side of it, though, too, is, you know, I mean, we're all, we're all a, uh, Nobody's perfect. None of us are really righteous. We're all rags to the Lord in that respect with our righteousness. So, and uh, thank God that Jesus saves all. You know, that's the other thing. But still, it's just uh, these are our brothers and sisters, the ones that are real and not just fronting on YouTube as Christians. But, you know, and uh, it's, it's tough. You know, it's definitely a huge dysfunctional family <laughs> in many ways. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, in that, it's <laughs> that right? Um, <laughs> So I was, I was up all night thinking about it. And like, I, I realized that Jesus being the embodiment of love, he came down here, not for the, not for just one group of people. He came down here for all of us because he loved humanity. If you're a human, he loves you, you know? And, um, you know, I just, I started to open my eyes. If I want to, if I am a follower of, of Yeshua, if I'm a follower of Jesus, then I need to love everybody, everybody, just like he did, even the sinners, even, you know, like I'm a sinner. We're all sinners. And, um, and, I, and I realized, too, that if Jesus were to come to uh, come like he did 2000 years ago and have, have, you know, walk among us in the same way that he did 2000 years ago. Do I think he would be going on a buddy Jesus tour of the churches in the U S <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, so I, I, I that's so loud. I'm happy. You like my joke, Angelo. Can I, uh, no, your mic's on. No. <laughs> <That's just> funny. <laughs> well, you know, I realized that what he would, what he would probably be doing is he would be going to, you know, to, to these neighborhoods where there's no Christians at all, 
probably yeah. a lot of these of these Muslim neighborhoods where they're being persecuted by other Muslims, you know, and spreading the love of, of God to them and sharing the good news. He wouldn't be going, you know, it's like I was reading in Luke where Jesus came and he was eating with the tax collectors and the Pharisees came along and said, why are you eating with them? You know, they're sinners. Yeah, I don't want to eat with y'all. That's what. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's yeah, exactly. Well, and also, it just they, you know, it creates echo chambers. Again, you'll get some factions of the Christian uh, thing, the where they just it's an echo chamber. They just stay with each other. They just bounce off each other, and they won't include anything else or open their minds uh, to to realize that we have to reach the world. I'm not trying to make this about mm -hmm. me, but that's part of it. Of again, of the way I do what I do, because I can reach more of the world doing worldly type videos on some level. You know what I mean? And a lot yeah. of us like that those things out here. You know, it's like we're still having to talk to the world. If I make a channel where I'm just preaching from the Bible and talking about Jesus all day, I'm just going to be talking to people that are down with that. And they're already good. We need to get the other ones, you know, so. Yeah, uh, you know, it's a thing. Um, we we got to be careful, like, because uh, – it's it's that uh it's that whole like you know uh mega church tv stuff that just turns people off to it you know it's and that's not that's not who jesus is you know he's he um they they kicked jesus out the church a long time ago like mm -hmm. and, and it's uh um it, it's not that it's it's um it, it's what i was saying uh unconditional love for real like um and you know acceptance of of anybody but um but but we got to the the problem like like it's written you know is the flesh is uh sin is the problem sin is the problem and mm -hmm. and and they're teaching us this tolerance of it you know and and that's becoming like uh, okay if you don't tolerate sin and you're a racist you don't tolerate sin and you're a homophobe yeah, or you're exactly. a, or you're a phobe of this a phobe of that you know i'm not afraid of y'all like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know it's like uh I, I just i just have a um you know i i, I read the book and i understand it you know and and it's the, it's the sin that's the problem it's the it's the um it's the virus it's mm -hmm. the virus that kills the soul and um and if you want your soul to live forever you got to cure the sin and and you got to cure the soul by by the Holy Spirit flushing out the, the virus. Yeah, that's so. true. That's a good way yeah. to put it. So, Christina, go ahead, though. Sorry. I mean, uh, I, th I think we both yeah, jumped in on you there, but go ahead. Oh, no, that's all right. Uh, so that night, you know, it just kind of, I, I, it changed me. I, I, I couldn't go to sleep until, like, like, the Lord just showed me that I had hate in my heart and that Jesus is love. And, you know, you can't have love in your heart if you've got hate in your heart. And it, it felt like it felt like God just came along and gave that hate the boot right out of my heart. And then Jesus is like, I'm here now, really. And <laughs> Forgiveness so, is the way. Like I, I used to be uh, real jealous of uh, how forgiving my mom was able to be because I, I, I had always uh, I, I mean, I, I grew up. Uh, it was just us, you know, like and um, I, shoot, I, I had to I had to become real, uh, real, real. Uh, vicious like you know in order to protect myself protect my mom protect uh anybody i cared about you know it's uh um mm -hmm. because uh, it was like me against everybody you know like uh the, where i grew up it was uh like i was one of a uh, couple white kids in my class there was a couple black kids and it was mostly asian and mostly mexican and uh and and the mexican kids didn't like me back then you know and um and, and and they would gang up on me and i would have to fight uh four or five of them a day you know it's like and then um uh, like i ended up getting used to it or whatever and then it kind of hardened me you know like and um and 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 i just became real vicious you know it's like uh if 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 you even slighted me like uh if you uh insulted me in any way like that cuz i would i would come to anybody with the same respect I'm showing you guys, you know, it's like, and, and if you didn't show that back or whatever, I took it as very personal, like, and, 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 and the way that I would, uh, I would choose to defeat that was the wrong way. And it was, it was to totally like decimate you, you know, like, and, and, and totally, and like, uh, I, I seen how, I mean, how I ended up, uh, hurting people's feelings off of that, you know, or hurt, hurting them as a person, you know, it's like, in um, and it, it 
it didn't make me feel good, you know. It's um, and the the way that my mom could just uh, forgive people for the worst shit, you know, like it, it was it was amazing to me, and I really had to I really had to learn that, you know, um, especially over the last couple of years, you know, it's um, to just you know what, I'm I'm gonna be that bigger person, you know. Like, I'll let it go. I can forgive you, and then, therefore, I can uh, relieve myself of this burden of this uh, anger, this negativity that I'm carrying with me. You know, the uh, the easiest way for Satan to have a foothold in our life is through a spirit of unforgiveness. Yes. You know? Yes. And, and, and I, I found... I, I, I had to dig down deep, but I found that forgiveness when God showed me that he's got a plan for all of us. And, and some of us haven't gotten to that point where we know the truth yet. And True. I, how would I feel if people gave up on me before I ever came to know the Lord? You yeah, know, I think true. we all give up on, uh, I think we all give up on each other at some point, you know, like, and, mm -hmm. and, and until we find that grace, that is when we stop giving up on other people. That's good. Because, yeah. Because we, because we've got that grace, so we should, and it, it, it gives us that spirit of, of forgiveness or and, and 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 grace ourselves to be like, hey, I, I, I understand that you got uh, these issues, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk. Uh, I'm not gonna walk the mile with you. I'm gonna walk too. That's true. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Be the bigger person. About yeah. It. Yeah. So, so like this was Sunday night and I suddenly I woke up and I felt like, wow, sudden, like this hate is gone and something was starting to change in me. And I kind of like let that kind of uh, marinate for a couple of days. And then Wednesday came around and I went back to this church that I didn't want to go back to, but I went. And uh, when I got there, they had a guest speaker. And that guest speaker apparently used to go there a long time ago. He had been gone for about 10 years and moved out of state, hadn't been back. Uh, and he was there doing the one sermon that he wanted his brothers and sisters to hear for uh, over 10 years, you know. And um, he got up there and he was crying. And he said, you know, I haven't been back here in eight or nine years. And I'll say it, it has not been a good eight or nine years. And he went on to talk about how he had gotten so depressed. He'd been through trial after trial after trial, and he had been serving the Lord, but he'd gone through hell and back many, many times. And that he got so depressed that he tried to kill himself. This preacher's up there talking about he tried to kill himself several times, was almost successful at it. And he said, and then the Lord picked him up and showed him Isaiah 61.3. And I said, what? Because wait a second, like this is a couple weeks after I like, you know, Isaiah 61 three. I had never heard of it until, you know, I went to that bookstore and I found that and I was like, Isaiah 61 three. And this this man was up there and I I have to say, I am so blessed that I went there because I I pretty much thought I wasn't going to get anything from a church like that. And I obeyed this this tug inside of me to go. And I went there with no agenda and I sat through one of the most amazing sermons, the most heartfelt, emotional, spiritual sermons I've ever, I've ever had a pleasure of listening to in my life. And that service usually goes about an hour, hour and a half on a Wednesday evening. And it lasted for three hours. Nice. <laughs> this man. Okay. So at the end of it, they had to do a prayer call and or altar call and you know it's Pentecostal everybody's going up there and they're all you know Jesus and they're like you know talking blah, 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 blah. and I'm like I do not mm -hmm. want to go up there you know I was like that was great I am gonna stay right here <laughs> and so they he went through and he laid hands on every single person in there and I was in the back and I was just like I just couldn't do it I just couldn't go up there even though I really 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 wanted that guy to pray over me because the stuff he had talked about that night was like, it was like he had a, a dagger, like a, you know, like the sword of the spirit. And like, it was just cutting away this bad stuff. And it talked to me so deeply about our trials. And I, I wish I had all night to talk to you about it, but there's still more to this story. 
So he prayed over me at the end of it. He walked back and he asked if he could pray over me. And I said, yes. And he prayed for emotional healing. And he, I didn't even tell him what I wanted to be prayed over. He just prayed over he, emotional healing and healing in my marriage, healing in my life, you know, healing, physical healing. And I left there and I felt changed. And it took me a few days to realize that I didn't feel depressed anymore. For the first time in a really long time, I didn't feel a bit of depression. I didn't feel PTSD. I, you know, I felt like, wow, some, this huge burden over that past week had just been lifted. And um, <clears throat> there was a, I, I went, I went back. <laughs> so I had a vision shortly after that, that so. because I've been, um, you know, after I had that night where I stayed up all night and I realized that even the people who are hurting me are, are, are loved by Jesus and loved by God. And all I have, it's my, you know, we need to pray for those people because they're in darkness. The devil's got them ensnared, you know, and we got to pray for them. And we can't just give up on them, you know, because God didn't, hasn't given up on us. That's true. Yeah. And I had this vision, this, you know, this church that I grew up in and these people stole my son, slandered me, did terrible, terrible things to me and my family. Um, and I hadn't been back there in a while, but I started praying for them, started praying for that church because a lot of the people in the church were lost and they were deceived and they don't even know it. Yes. You know? Yes. No, I, I yeah. have something to say about that after you're done. Uh, you could go ahead and interrupt me. I'm going to get a drink of water. Oh, yeah. Go go get that water, girl. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Check this out. When, the, the, the day that I got, the day I got out um, last, uh, last March uh, 31st, um, I went into local grocery store and there's this little guy in there. He's a um, short, real short guy um, from Romania. Uh, real, real nice guy. He's like, uh, he's just, he's just the, the kindest character, you know? And, um, and I went and talked to him and I hadn't seen him in a while. And, um, like the first time I had met him, uh, he, he, he was working at, you know, they, they have those, uh, you scan, uh, lanes where you can do it yourself yeah. in the grocery store. Yeah. All right. Well, he, he, he's the, he's the guy who does a little, uh, holds the little uh the, the little computer thing to to control all that and i go uh, the first time i met him i, I was uh I, I was passing him by or whatever and then he's uh he he, uh, he said uh have a blessed day and then i stopped and then i turned around i was like you christian and he was like he was all yes yes and i was like uh i was all hey you know so i started talking to him or whatever and and i tested him Cause he told me that he had a wife and he had uh, three children. And uh, so I was like, um, and there's this real pretty girl that walks by or whatever. And um, cause I had been talking to him for like 10 minutes and, you know, I was all like buddy, buddy with him. And um, I was like, uh, and, 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 uh, and I point and I was like, I was all, Hey, check that out or whatever. What he does. He looks the other way, turns his head down. I was like, Oh, this is the guy. So then, you know, like, I was like, I was all, hey, you know, and I shook his hand again. I was like, I was like, you know, I I, I like your style, you know, because uh, I don't know many people that do that. That's something I would do. And uh, the the fact that he showed that uh, that honorable character, I was impressed. So, yeah, that's um, cool. And so when, when I got out, um, like, a year after that, um let's see yeah i went in it was a what it was a friday and um and i went in and i asked him uh if uh if his uh, if if his pastor would baptize me right because from what i read in the book it says uh because i know i've been baptized in the holy spirit from my experience but doesn't it say you have to get the the water baptism too well, there's a lot of different uh, debates on that. Um, well, because doesn't he say them. unless you're born of, born again of water and the spirit, or does that mean you know like the natural birth and not like? Uh, you know, I don't. Uh, my thing is, I was baptized in the church I was raised in, but and um, and I, 
I think it's great in the fact if you want to do a public proclamation of your faith and do that is just well it, it was it was it's, it, but, it's not so much even public more like hey I want I want a I want a uh, I want a like a a man of God to to do the ceremony just like uh, Jesus went yeah. to uh, John the Baptist then I would do it yeah if you feel that then I would do it you know what I mean like I'm at a point now yeah. where I think people can just straight up accept Christ and truly follow and read the Bible for themselves and. I believe they can have that direct line there, but even the church I was raised in believes you have to have the water baptism. So yeah, so I mean it's important to me. Um, so check this out. I I had I had prayed inside that 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 I would uh, that he would give me the honor of earning my name, so that'd be a messenger, and and a protector messenger, guardian angel, if you will. So um, and I had asked him, and then he so he invited me to his church goes to this little Baptist church right here in uh here in this town and uh I'd never I'd never really been inside I'd played basketball at, uh, at like outside the building because they got a little hoop up there a long time ago so I go there with my mom and I uh <laughs> it's crazy like I dressed in my suit had my overcoat I looked like uh Michael Corleone basically and yeah. um <laughs> like all black you know and um I go in there and they they have the the what, what's the room where all the pews are at? Uh, I'm not sure. I guess it's the service area. I'm not sure. Yeah, you know. Okay, so I go in there. Sanctuary. Big, big wide double doors. Yeah, exactly. And there's these two seats right at the back. And and I sit right there. I, like I have my mom sit right right uh, in there, and then I sit right on the aisle. And I can see the entire congregation. There's like 300 people there. And that's when, that's when, um, cause I had felt compelled to go. And since I had been invited and, um, and I'd given my word that I would go, I, I, I had to hold that cause that's who I am. And, um, so I was sitting there and I was watching the pastor. He was giving a sermon about, uh, what was it? Romans, uh, one, one through three. And uh, it, it was good. And I could tell he had the spirit in him because he was a real big guy. And he was trying with all his might not to start weeping on stage. And that's, uh, that's an overwhelming uh, spirit uh, feeling that somebody gets. But that's when I looked, that's when I looked right up. And I, what I saw, I saw this huge cross, this... this uh, stained glass cross hanging from the rafters and what what did i see but the 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 order of the rose cross cross with the rose in the middle rose the of, five petal rose, rose and the, well it, well it's 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 the order of the rose cross the same thing uh, really yeah. but it's uh and you know what i have that same symbol on this book i was talking about earlier and um <laughs> and i know about that and it had the it had the Dagon fish on it. It had all the colors of the rainbow on it. If you go on Yahoo and you search uh, Order of the Rose Cross, and then you click search, and then you go to images, you'll see the same cross yeah, all over yeah, it. There's... And we know that is a satanic order. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, they are. Yeah, that's, and, that's... Go ahead. and I was sent there to see this cross. And then what happened after that... Um, they did a communion. It's a Baptist church. I didn't know they did communion in a Baptist church, but what what I had witnessed was this is the craziest thing. And my mom, she she didn't realize it too until I brought it to her uh, attention. I was whispering to her the whole time. I was like, I was pointing the cross out to her. I was like, look, and then she was like, oh my goodness. And then um, because we knew what it was, um, because of her past. So um, and and all my research and what I saw after that was. They passed out the little grape juices to everybody in the whole place. And normally when people take those little crackers and the juice, they'll just do it right then, right? Yep. Like, like you've seen it? You've well, seen yeah, it? You yeah, the church I was raised in does that. Okay, or, or, or a Catholic church, uh, well, they'll have them come up to the, to the altar and they'll do that or whatever. But this was different, all right? And especially because I had done a little research and it said – that um, the communion ceremony isn't what, what people 
really th th think that it is. And, um, and the infiltrators that have been going into the churches that run most of the churches these days, like uh, National Council of Churches, World Council of Churches, um, they've sent in these uh, infiltrators to teach yeah. this false gospel. And, um, and what happened was, I, what, what I watched, this, it just it blew my mind. What was it? Um, I, I watched 300 people right in front of me. I wouldn't let my mom touch the, the tray with the, 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 the grape juice and, mm -hmm. um, and the crackers just because of what I had read. And because of what I had read, it said that ceremony is a demonic uh, um, cannibal, cannibalism of, of, of Christ's body and, and drinking his vampirism of his blood. And, yeah. um, and w what happened was I watched as... Like me and my mom watched this whole thing. If she if she was awake right now, <laughs> she would tell you. Um, okay. And and I watched three hundred people. It, it, it like it all got silent. Like like they, like they had lost control over their own. Yeah. The, the use of their own body, and I watched as some spirit had them all drink this juice at the same instant. Yeah. Like that's a, the entire that's, room. Yeah. No, that's a good and observation. It, yeah. Oh my goodness! No, it, um, it, I was I was like I was rocked. My goodness, what what are these people doing? They have no, no idea yeah, what they're doing. That's and, it. And uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got to cut you off, man. I just I I just realized oh, no, we've gone ahead. almost three hours tonight, and I let me finish this last part. This okay, is very ahead. important. Sure. And okay, so after that was done, the ser the that sermon was done, and 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 everybody was leaving. I went out into the into the lobby. My friend Florine found me. He's like, "You came," and I was like, "Yes, I, I told you I would." And then um, he, he, he went away, and then uh, I felt the need to stay. And then, so I grabbed my mom, took her back into the sanctuary, like you're saying, and um, <laughs> I sat down, and I just felt compelled to do this. And then, um, and then I looked up, and what did I see? I saw three windows on one side of the room and three windows behind me, and each one of these windows had two bunnies on it. Twelve bunnies. There's six on one side, six on the other side, surrounding the room, and that's Ishtar. They brought Ishtar into the into the house of God. Yep, that's it. They brought an unclean animal and and an idol into into the church. They have a satanic cross hanging from there. They had a demon spirit take over all of them and do yeah. this uh, vampirism, and it just it freaked the crap well, out of me. Well, well, that's where some of the astrotheologists have it right that uh, modern-day Christianity is pagan. I mean, that's just the thing. It's all pagan in nature. So, yeah. So I went home, and I got all the stuff, and I got all my, and I got a ton of research. I grabbed the book. I grabbed, uh, I grabbed stuff from Hour of the Time, because Doyle is a friend of mine. And uh, and I went and and I and, and I found uh, I found another uh, one guy and his family there, afterwards. And I I, I grabbed him. I took him in there, um, and his his little son followed us. And I took him straight in there, and I showed him the cross. I showed him the bunnies. I showed I showed him everything. And then I was like, "You take this information, and you go look it up yourself." I was like, "God sent me here to do this." You know, it's like, and the, the whole time I had that, uh, you know, that tingling sensation you get? Sure. And it overtakes your whole body. Well, this was the most powerful that I'd ever felt it. And it was doing it the whole time that I went home, got the research, went back. And then I gave it to them or whatever, and um, they, they didn't listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's no surprise, but at least you tried, man. I well, went, I was, I was invited one more time. This uh, this last uh, uh, Christmas Eve, we all know it's Saturnalia, whatever you know. I don't sure, celebrate, sure. but um, I was invited in there again by Florine, so I went, and uh, God cool. sent God sent me in there to do it. I that testimony that I read to you guys earlier, yeah. I had printed. I went to Staples and I printed out a, a, a two hundred of these things, and I had it in a little box, and I was carrying it around with me, just giving it to people I th thought would be get some out of it. And uh, I brought it into the church with me, and I had a bottle of water in the other hand. And I went into the church. It was packed. Everybody was standing up. <laughs> and I was offered, when I got to one of the hallways, I was way in the back, and I, uh, this this kid uh, was standing next to me, and he, he offers me a candle. And I, and, and, and I was like, oh, well, I don't have any hands, so I can't, I can't take it. And 
I ended up staying the whole thing, and then I find out, I find out two days later that the 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 um the candlelight vigil is a satanic uh um yeah, just another ritual yeah yeah and God sent me in there to see it is that's what I'm good. telling you and no that's cool and I just wanted to share that with you guys so oh. you guys know that when you guys go into your own churches no thanks man no thanks for no sharing problem. that man and like I said I. Uh, I'm glad you got to to share that that with us. So Christina as well. I just want to give you yeah, just more minutes. I'm sorry. Like I said, I, we've, I've gone. It's two hours and fifty minutes. I looked down, so I want to shut her down in a little bit. And sorry about that. But did you have anything you wanted to finish with the vision, Christina? Yeah. You know what? I think I'll save that for another time. It's almost eight o'clock, but there is something I want to say that's really important. Uh, uh, good. Well, we'll do it. Next. I'll have you on the next time. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll always uh, do these kinds of shows. You know that. So we'll do it yeah. again another time. I'm sorry about that, but uh, that's all right. Can I, can I share a little bit of something with y'all though? Absolutely. Okay. Just because we've kind of gotten on the subject of, of depression and addiction and things like that. And, um, you know, I, I kind of, I'm one of those people, I'm a visionary. I like, I see things in like a movie format in my brain and that helps me understand, you know, life in general. So, you know, our life, we're driving down this highway. Our spirit is us and our body is our car and we're driving and we, you know, we go through trials, every single one of us. And when we're doing that, when that happens, sometimes we don't really see it coming and it kind of reminds me about like when I've gone to Cincinnati or DC and we go under this tunnel and it's like, where did this tunnel come from? And you're like, you're going through it. It's like, you know, like the seen those videos of the babies in the tunnels. Anyway, you're like, Whoa, what is this? You know, how long is this? I don't know where this, what, what are we under right now? You know, um, that's kind of like our trials because we're, we're stuck in this dark tunnel we don't know what's outside of it. We can't really, you know, just decide, okay, I don't want to be in this tunnel anymore and just turn out of it because you have to go through it in order to get to the other side. And when we have anger and fear and things and like addictions, things that we tend to fall back on when we are going through times of trial, because, uh, you know, that's, that's the easiest way for the devil to, to get us back into old habits and, and to trap us. But when we when we allow those things to start driving our car, our car breaks down. Yep, we, that's true. Yeah, we cannot we cannot move forward. We can't get through it with our car broken down. So when we put God back in the driver's seat and we're riding in our car, he gets us through the tunnel. And then once we get to the other side, because we didn't know what what that was all about while we were in it. But once we get to the other side, just like I've it's, it's happened to me, I've got to the other side, I look back in the rear view mirror and I see there's like this huge building or, or something like this beautiful structure that we just went under. And I go, Oh, well, that's what that was. Yeah. That's, like that. that's a good analogy. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, yeah, that's a good analogy. Thanks. Well, well hey, thank, we'll... You. thank you so much for no, letting you... me be on here. I really Anna, you're welcome. It. I'm sorry you're feeling sick, but we'll, I'll get you on another time when I have more time to, to get you in here. And I've got to reach out and get some of these other folks on sometime as well. Then I've also got some guests just, uh, you know, that have things that they, uh, you know, put stuff out on like documentaries or whatever. I got some of these people lined up, so we'll mix it all up with everybody soon. But, you know, I love you and I appreciate you coming on. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Take care, Christina. God bless you. Thanks. You too. Bye. All right, guys, I'm going to jump over to the chat, and I'll just say once again, I, I appreciate my guests tonight, uh, Juliet, Christina, and Angelo. So thanks for coming on, and let's jump over here to the chat for a second. Um, a lot of people have written me, too. They want, you know, I always mix the shows up, and I'll do one. I try to mix it in where I can get a chance to talk to you guys a little bit and answer your questions. So next week, I'll, I'll probably do a little more of that, and uh, we'll just keep, it, keep mixing it up. Like I said, I've got a couple of exciting guests as well. I've reached out to so hopefully these uh, two folks can come on over the next few weeks and then I always like opening it up from time to time like we did tonight and just talking to you guys and having you come on you know so uh, anyway I just want to say a uh, thank you thanks to Twit Twitwit I think she was my only mod tonight it's the one I'm seeing in there but I appreciate you being here tonight and uh, thanks to everybody guys thanks so much for taking your time 
Uh, really appreciate it. I always have people asking what the show's going to be, and it changes every week. You know, tonight felt felt more like having people's testimonies and things like that on there, and and to me it felt right. And sometimes I just I never really question it because I know it reaches different ears. You know, there's a really wide range of an audience here, and don't you worry. Sooner or later, I'm going to find an expert on the lizard man from South Carolina because I want to get into some cryptozoology and some of that weird stuff as well. So we'll keep mixing it up as I always do here. Uh, once again, uh, guys, thanks so much for taking some time and, and listening. Thanks for watching my videos and sharing and liking and all the other stuff. My website isn't ready yet. I've tried a few different chat rooms. I don't like them. I don't want to release it till it's 100%, but we're close. So we'll do that soon, and then that'll be a chat room you guys can jump to after the show if you like in the future, and I can meet you there, and maybe it'll be more of a personal environment. you know. So anyway, guys, I'm rambling, and this is what I do. God bless you all. <laughs> I appreciate you being here. Have a wonderful week, and I got videos dropping this week, and I'll have another show next weekend. Okay, so take care of yourselves, and uh, we'll talk to you real soon.